So here we are at Hawke's Bay for the National Singles Quarter Final on the men. So we've got uh, Gary Cotter and Kaelin Huwella playing in the quarterfinal. Both players are um, starting off on rink on the uh, ditch hand. Oh, one player, sorry. Um, Kaelin's starting on the ditch hand. And Kaelin is from Taranak, uh, from Wanganui, sorry. And Gary is from Mark, it's uh, good morning to you. Dave Edwards here, mate. Um, we're down to the nitty-gritty of this competition. Um, now, I must admit, uh, I don't know very much about these two guys. Uh, being being from uh, your area, your, your neck of the woods, as far as the North Island's concerned, you might know a little bit more about them. Yeah, so Kalen is a fourth-year player and currently in the New Zealand um, Mary team. And I believe he could be the only player in Wanganui to win the Senior Championship singles. So I'm sure if there's someone else that has, we'll get that information through to us. But I'm you, as a junior, you mean? As a, as a junior, yes, correct. OK, well, he's obviously a promising up-and-coming player then, if um, being a junior and winning through to this event, that's, a, that's no, uh, that's a, certainly is a fantastic achievement. Yeah, so he plays out of the Jury Hill Club. Um, up on the hill, for those that know uh, Wanganui well. Probably a little bit of uh, pre-match nerves for him here. He's um, He was a little bit unlucky with that bowl. He just had to clear the short bowl there to um, to be somewhere in the area, but he sees himself three down at the moment with only one bowl left to come for him. To um, But it's probably just a little bit of nerves for him, no doubt. Yeah, the ditch head itself is potentially the best hand from what we've seen from the other games. The, the difference is on the actual ditch hand, if you don't get your weight correct, you'll be a bit like that, short and long, all day, clearly. Um, but it is a kind hand, because it doesn't matter how wide we go, as you'll see with this bowl, every bowl will hit the centre line on this hand. OK. And that'll be a pretty common way. feature of ditch hands, isn't it, really? Sometimes you, um, a lot of greens, you'll find the ditch hand will always bring the bowl back to the centre line for you. Yeah, what we've seen from the other games is if you go a little bit wider, you need to have an extra yard. Otherwise, okay. it will pull up short. Okay, that's okay. Uh, out and again. Oh, welcome, John. Welcome, John. Yeah, yeah, so... On that um, triangle down the bottom, I'll put that off. You, just for your information, John, you're on board with us. Welcome. OK, so he's not quite with us yet, but this is a crucial ball on the first end here, and he's just going to run out of legs. Just run out of legs. So let's see whether this is a three or a four here, uh, Mark. Um, looks like it'll be four. Although Tony Terry, who's our marker today, he's been normally very good giving us some heads up on how many it actually is, but he's not he's not gone for four paddles straight away. Having a look at the Having a look at the last Entry one, here. it's definitely three. Well, a very interesting match this, I think, guys, and good morning to you. Just had a few technical difficulties, and being uh, a techno-drongo, um, it, it, it only <laughs> took uh, my, 
I took my 18 month old grandchild to come in and sort it out for me. No. <laughs> but interesting that these two, these two played each other in the first round um, on Friday morning. So Gary Cotter of Central Cambridge and Kaylin Huella. Uh, and Huella won that by 21 to 13. And you've already mentioned, uh, Mark, about uh, what an outstanding young player he is. Uh, you know, men won the Taranaki Fours which is no mean feat, is it? And um, was in that uh, Aotearoa Māori team in the Oceania Challenge where he won the men's singles and also the triples. Um, yeah, gold star, as you mentioned, uh, out of Jury Hill, but also these days out of Paratutu as well. So outstanding potential. And he was, a, I remember when I looked up uh, about him some time ago, there was a story on him as a 10-year-old golfer, you know, how he was already making an impact. So he's one of those youngsters who's, could probably turn his hand to anything. Bit of a natural sportsman, eh? Yeah, I think so. As far it's as amazing that, you know, that, that, that you get people who um, who are adept at other sport and you get um, people who retire from the more physical types of sport and they've been pretty good at rugby, cricket or whatever and they come to bowls <laughs> and they've got that natural sporting ability and they can pick the sport up pretty quickly and he's obviously one of those guys. Yeah, he, he's, and, certainly, um, he's certainly a very good player for, or a fourth-year player. Fourth year, isn't that amazing, eh? <laughs> Cotter, on the other hand, has been around um, oh, quite a while, but he's, he's been in Auckland squads, I think, uh, with Colin Williams, one of the Bowls New Zealand workers here today. He, he would know Gary pretty well, but... Um, he has had a very pretty successful at the in the PBA. He went to the UK uh, earlier in the year, um, having won some event that entitled him to go there. And he also he knocked over Nathan Glasson earlier too. So he's beaten. Uh, he lost to Huella, but he beat Glasson, Yaxley, and then Ahern, who um, was playing so well, the Wellington representative. So that's how Gotter, Cotter has got to this particular stage. Yeah, Off to I a flyer too, getting yeah. a four on the first end, and he's pretty handy with his first couple here. Hasn't absolutely nailed it, but he's still holding a couple of shots. Dave, do you realise that uh, Mark would have said when that bowl had left his hand that he's going to be two metres short? <laughs> <laughs> Picked it up pretty quick, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is, this is pretty good, this one, though. Yeah, it's a great ball. That's, uh, that'll ease the nerves for him, getting the shot there. Now, by the way, John, we better get the formalities out of the way. Have you got your card? I have. It's right <laughs> here, mate. Don't worry. Good boy. I, Just I checking. hauled it out to Joe yesterday to make sure that you had it around. <laughs> she said, I don't put up with that. Yeah, mate, I'll tell you what she said. <laughs> uh, very good. Yeah, he's on a great track here. That's brilliant. Maybe shot, don't know. Easier for shot by the looks of things, although the our yeah, marker has confidently stuck a paddle up. Unfortunately, I couldn't see what colour it was. Uh, blue paddle, I think, uh, Dave. So I have a feeling so. that's Kalen's got the blue paddle, so Kalen's holding shot. Drawing one of these bonus shots that... Um, Joe was talking about yesterday that are very costly if we don't get them. And this is a great ball. Looks like he's taken advantage oh. of it. That's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So we see the two blue paddles there. That uh, indicates that Kalen has picked up a couple. So after dropping a four in the first, he picks up a two in the second. So he's right closing that gap. Here we have the qualifiers. So Roger Glendinning of Geraldine... Uh, against Craig Tinker, um, George of Russell against Grantham of Mount Albert, Symes against Glasson, and this one that we're watching now. So those are the eight players who are vying for a place in the semi-finals. Yeah, just with that, um, have... sorry, sorry, um, John, just with no, no, that, um, uh, Roger Glendini won his game this morning in, in the last 16 um which was actually nine qualifiers, 21-20 with the very last bowl. 
Wow. Against, oh. against um, Brett uh, Hearn from Titahi Bay. And uh, I just, of course, got a vested interest in the women's where I uh, saw Audrey, uh, Audrey Stevenson of Ramati representing the Kapiti Centre. Um, was quite had quite an advantage. I think she was up 18-11 at one stage, and then it got to 18 all when the time limit ran out, so they had to play an extra end. And uh, it was a long end. No, I'm not meaning the distance. I'm talking about the time because these two players were involved were so cautious about it all and thinking and considering the next shot. And eventually, with her last bowl holding shot, Audrey Stevenson decided to play a block, um, which was the right shot. I know we talked about it a bit, Mark. And she picked up the win to move through to the semis. It just got in the eye a little bit, and sometimes I know that um, blocks aren't always good, but there was no constructive place for Audrey to chuck her bowl that was going to help her. So at least on this occasion, putting the short one in helped. We've got the classic uh, left hand versus right hand here, and um, one of the things that you, uh, you, you learn pretty quickly is to totally ignore the line if you're a right-hander watching a left-hander, you don't take any notice of the left-hander's line because the bowl comes out completely different angles, etc., with the setup of a left-hander versus a right-hander on the mat. So, um, a lesson for uh, for the uninitiated there is to um, yeah just work out your own lines when you're playing against someone who's got the op uses the opposite hand to you, and um, sometimes when you're playing someone. Who, uh, who uses the same hand as you, you can use, and, and especially if they've got similar bowls as well, you can obviously observe very much what line they're taking. Um, but when it's right versus left-handed, uh, something you can't do. Dangerous thing to do if you did it. Now this bowl's pretty good here. He's going to get a result here. Yeah. He's got a bit stiff on oh, the edge of the bowl. Oh, oh, yeah. But unlucky, yep. And the other interesting thing in this game, Gary has started on this forehand, which is a little bit tricky, but being a left-hander, he might have a bigger arc at the jack on it. If that Correct. Makes, if oh, that makes yeah, sense. Um, whereas everyone else that's played this hand hasn't got the bowls to turn back enough. And here you'll see he's quite wide, but it's still turned back because he's a left-hander. Two cunning left-hander, dead right. Yeah, and that so, backs up... Uh, the earlier statements we were making, yeah. So he might actually have an advantage on that hand where the ditch hand, which everyone else has gone to, may not suit him as easy as this um, forehand going going up towards the scoreboard. Yep. I think with regard to... Oh, have we got him trying that hand? So Kaylin is using um, Optimans. Euro Optimans, and this is this hand where you drop your line a bit and they just duck away and go nowhere, as Kalen's about to find out. Although he might get, he some might luck. get a bit lucky here, yeah. <laughs> He's still be a couple down, I think, but... I think one of our talking uh, points too, uh, Dave, uh, it was that we were watching the non-bowling player. Um, invariably, they were not looking at their opponent on the mat or the delivery of their bowl or their line or anything, they were always gazing, as Kaylin is now, looking at something totally different, you know. And uh, most Absolutely of the players just do not watch. Yeah, It's a very good point, John, and something that um, it's, uh, it's, it's a very important part of the game. You've, you've got to have a, a da bit of downtime. If you, if you concentrate on your opponent's bowls as well as your own, you wear yourself out. You, you really are. Men mentally, you're going to wear yourself out. Yeah, yeah. Sure, you want to see, you want to see where, as we see the um, semi-finalists up here for the, for the ladies, the semi-finalists draw, Lindley O'Callaghan from Alexander against Briar Atkinson from Paratutu and Nicole Toomey from Stokes Valley, Audrey Stevenson. Audrey sneaking through, as you mentioned, John. So those yeah. four players, pretty familiar names around the ladies' circuit, that's for sure. That match, uh, Janine played Nicole, did she? Mark? Yeah, look, that, that was a great yeah. game of game, great game of bowls. I think it ended up 17-14. I could be corrected on that, but 
Um, both players played outstanding bowls. There were a couple of heads where you could have put a tea towel over all eight bowls. So they had a, definitely had some really great ends. Well, we saw quite a bit of Janine yesterday, and uh, she played remarkably well to, to beat Val Smith. And uh, even though she'd already qualified at that stage, there was no letting up, and she she nailed it. She's played some superb bowls there. So I can imagine that match against Nicole, who's an in-form player, would have been well worth watching. So Cotter leading by 6-2. to two. Getting back to our little conversation we started there about the uh, non-bowling player and what they do whilst the opposition are bowling, and I think it, it it is such an important facet of the game that you've got to you've got to take a wee break mentally, and so that's a great opportunity for you to do it as well while the opposition are playing their bowl. You can't influence their bowl, you can't do anything about it, so why bother using all sorts of mental energy on on watching it as it goes down the green? Sure, you want to see. Once the bowl stops where it is, of course, it's going to have an influence on what you might be going to do, but you definitely don't want to be concentrating on it whilst it's going down the green. And it was funny, I can tell a little story about in the New Zealand system, We, Mandy Boyd, I'm sure she won't mind me telling this little story about how Mandy was one of those players who would pick her next bowl up and she'd be standing right behind the player as they were delivering their bowl and she would be concentrating on their bowl as it went down the rink and just, you know, she was forever staring at it and studying it and and it was one of those things where we just quietly in between games we took Mandy aside and just we, we gave her a little challenge. We wanted her to, at the end of the game, we wanted to know how many windows there were in the building over the road and what colour the roofs <laughs> were of the houses down the road so that it would... And it was quite interesting in the next game to watch her because she had, she had pick her bowl up and be standing right behind and then remember, all of a sudden, she'd remember what we'd said to her and you'd see her turn away and look at the, look at the buildings. <laughs> and the, so. But it was something that um, she picked up on and, and, and introduced into her game and she, she you know, to this day, says it, it certainly did make a big difference to her mentally and the ability to stay um, mentally full on throughout the games when, when she decided to abandon worrying about what the opposition were doing. It's, um, yeah. I guess in lawn bowls, really, we've only got a, like a 20 seconds we need to concentrate per bowl, realistically. Correct. Correct. Um, yep. And we don't need to spend three minutes concentrating on other people's bowls that we can't affect. <laughs> Absolutely right. So we look like uh, kaylin has got a couple of shots here. And uh, if you've just joined us, a commentary today from... Uh, Mark Noble, and uh, you've been listening there to and that story on Mandy Boyd from Dave Edwards, former New Zealand coach. Well, this is not a bad nudge either, is it? Yep, I think that'll count. I think so. Yeah. so, so that's that another one it. of those free hits. And he's converted it as well. He yeah, took advantage of it to three it is. Yep. Three. Yeah, so that's two conversions from two for him, so that's really important. There is the score up two straight away, 6-5 now. It's um, Cotter leading. So the nerves for Hulia will be gone by now, and he'll be fully immersed in the game. And pretty happy that he's uh, managed to, uh, after dropping the four on the first end, he's managed to get quickly into his routine and settled into the game nicely. And just a reminder, we're still on the two-hour time limits for these quarterfinals. When we get to the semifinals, they are no time limit, so just be aware of that. It's a decent first bowl, just a bit short, but he's picked that line on that ditch hand. And uh, again, we're seeing, Mark, as you spotted, that uh, the left-hander, Gary Cotter, playing the open side, which... We seldom saw over the first two days, Friday and Saturday, the players uh, playing on this rink for the first time. It didn't take them long to work out that, as right-handers anyway, the uh, ditch hand was the uh, the better one to play, the more consistent. But you can see there his arc back to the jack is a lot different than the right-handers. When we watch Kalen play that hand, you'll realise his arc is way, way different. He certainly got it sorted. An absolute yeah. beauty there with his first one, a front touch. 
feature. So, no, but interesting also to note. It'll be in, just keep an eye on the next end, but it looks like um, Gary's playing round the clock forehand. So he Correct. uses the ditch hand. Yeah, so uh, interesting there that he's maybe he favours his forehand um, or, or he's just found that uh, those two hands suit his bowls perfectly and, he, yeah, he's playing round the hand, round the clock forehand. Which is unusual. It would be unusual for a right-hander, for sure. It's, uh, yeah. Probably a whole ball high. Got him up high. So Gary is actually using uh, Dreamline XGs for those that are interested. I did start to say that Kalen's uh, father is a vice president of Bowls New Zealand. I think I've just spotted him in the background there up on the seating. Another, this is going to be, could be one of these good bad ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, he's played a great bowl, but unfortunately he's just spilled the jack out into the open for Kalen to be able to full draw and sit the bowl trail jack or two. But on that open hand, and, you know, he hasn't played much down there, although we're only into the fifth end. <clears throat> so we'll see how he manages that. The jack moving just slightly. It's now exposed. And it's interesting, when you've heard a lot of people say that the hand's hard, your confidence might think, oh, are they right or they're not right? And if you fail a couple of times, oh, he's close he's to close here. Close here. Oh, oh, he was... Wow. A little bit unlucky to get the little little feather off of a short bowl. So there's a whole crew of Jury Hill supporters up behind, as we're looking down the far end there, up behind the uh, camera at the end. So Kalen's father in the centre there. His mother, obviously his mother to the right, not to the left or behind. <laughs> <laughs> well, he if, if he doesn't change anything with this shot, <laughs> then he'll be bang on it, won't he? Because it was only the, just that slight feather of that shortish bowl that prevented him last time. Let's see what he's got this time. I think it's going to it's drop a mile under. away, Mark. No, I think he's under, mate. They, yeah, they drop just... quick at the end, and unfortunately, oh, he's now made it two gosh. down. Yeah. And I think that's the difference between that arc and the arc with the left-hander. Um, I guess I can put that into perspective with someone like me who plays off the wrong leg. We have a different arc on the forehand to sort of in between the right and the left-hander. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that, that makes a difference on where we're chucking them to everyone else, clearly, and, and the end result is different. You get to play on your own little piece of the of the rink, Mark. <laughs> yes, that's the best way to describe <laughs> that, actually. <laughs> so we're somewhere in the middle <laughs> between where everyone else is chucking them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> which well, there's which an can, instance. There's a fail, as we've talked about, on those bonus yeah. shots. But I think Gary will be happy with that. He, he's come away with two, and he's stopped the momentum on the scoring. Um, you know, the ends that he's dropped before don't count if we start scoring some back. So 8-5 he leads now. Yeah, 13 shots and five ends, so it's none of this one all. It could be a quick game. It could very well be, although... Uh... As they really settle into the groove, then I'm pretty sure yeah. that we'll see the heads heads tighten up, and things might be a bit uh, bit closer. So just looking at um, who else's uh, form today. He beat Cotter on, on Friday. I mean, he beat Cotter in the first round, 21-13. Then he beat Kenyon of North End, 21-12. Uh, and and also beat Tinker of Waikiki 21-18. So that was his progress through to qualifying. So. Um, I think he beat Bruce Ahern in the last game. He did, yeah. As well. 
Ah, oh, sorry, Brent Ahern. Brent. Yeah. Being a coach, I love looking at people's deliveries and the good news about the of the guys have got really nice deliveries. Just a couple of things. Nice uh, transfer of body weight behind the bowl is there. The that I would have for um, Kalen if we uh, get another chance to see him close up is, is looking and ground immediately in front of him and as a as a coach but of, uh, doesn't hugely affect his game because he's had so much fourth year player so uh, just um it was quite quite interesting listening to Dave with all that stuff breaking up because it meant we only heard half of what he said so he'll be able to repeat it later on <laughs> deliveries were in, yes um, yeah I mean and Gary's got really smooth so so is Kalen but I think as he was pointing out Kalen's looking right down in front of him when he delivers whereas mm, some of us look a little bit further up the green and some look right up to their mark on the bank, even or if Correct. they're taking that, don't they, when they deliver it? Yeah. Here's a good bowl here. So just past the jack, covering the three bowls that are passed. Okay. So that sounds a bit better, Dave. You were just crackling up. I, I thought maybe you'd had coffee delivered to you or something and you'd <laughs> spilt it into the machine. <laughs> Well, funnily enough, I have had the nice cup of tea delivered, but... Uh, oh, <laughs> have you? <laughs> Beautiful. No spillage as yet. Yeah, but as I was saying, the deliveries both look uh, really, really nice. Great um, body weight transfer and nice, you know, straight lines of, of the arm swing, etc. But yeah, that little concern with uh, Kalen just looking down at the ground as he delivers his bowl, you'll see here, and I think you guys mentioned that... Um, the further you can look up the green, the better. And, and John, you mentioned that a lot of people actually look at their mark on the bank, and that's that's what the coaching manual says is the best way to go. Look at your mark on the bank or bring it back to about three quarters of the way down the green. So you've got your head up looking down the green, but um, hasn't affected Kalen oh, here. Look at this one. Yeah, another great, no, great no. ball. And that's, um, yeah, that's a conversion again. That's three in a row he's converted um, with that last bowl effectiveness. Of course, there'll be club coaches out there and players too, Dave, who disagree with you and they say, you know, looking way down to the mark on the bank, doesn't that affect your green, uh, your weight and all that sort of thing? And some players I know or coaches have said, look, if I see your head up when you're delivering and you're looking down there, um, I, you know, I want to see you looking sort of a few metres out from the mat sort of thing. So you get variations and it ends up being what suits you, doesn't it? And clearly what suits Kalen here is looking out only a you know, sort of a Gary Lawson type spot, I suppose. You know, that's what he yep. does, isn't it? He yep. looks out only yep. a, a short way in front of him. Yeah. Yep. Look, Gary. Gary used to look down the green, but I. But and this is another thing that has to be taken into account. Gary's got an injury these days. I, I think it's a, a neck um, problem that that inhibits his ability to lift his head up and look down the line. And so, because he did used to, he did most definitely did yep. used to look down the. Um, but. Uh, so, so yes, you have have to take those sorts of things into account. Whether you know that, that maybe the body won't allow you to keep the head up, but the the key reason why we like to see you looking down the green as far as possible is, it, it, and it does assist with speed control. It really does. I mean, I always used to say to someone, if I was going to throw a tennis ball at you, you're standing over ten yards away from me. You got your hands out. When I throw the tennis ball to your hands, I don't look down at the ground in front of me. I'm looking at where I want that tennis yep. ball to land. And so that's that's the theory that we use behind keeping your head up as much as you can for that delivery. But um, as I said, um, each to their own. And obviously, Kalen's done a fantastic job with his deliveries, the, the results he's getting. Um, so, yeah. 
And he's playing that open hand now, Mark. Yeah, they, he, he just had a talk um, with Gavin Scrivenger, who is probably clearly his rinkside coach. And that was quite a, you know, about a minute long discussion. And I'm presuming that was about what hand we were playing. More than actually yeah. the length. And that's pretty clear that he's actually swapped over. And also it means he's playing the same hand as his opponent, which, uh, you know, can has it, have its positives. Uh, you're correct about that. It's not a bad ball if he's got the weight. Yeah. It's close. And that looked like Hold up the red good. one, did he? Correct. And in fact, I was sitting down with um, Kaylin yesterday when we were having dinner, and we were, I was talking to him about playing the ditch side. I said, but I wouldn't fear swapping over to the other hand. Yep. So, so, um, so he's, he's obviously listened to what I said, and he's played three really good bowls here. It's, it's yep. Oh, yeah, beauty. So not afraid of that bowl, which is, what, half a metre short or something, not even that. Um, often players would just avoid that for fear of knocking it up, but he backs himself, and as we so often hear from experts like yourselves, you, you sometimes you've just got to bowl and say, as if that bowl wasn't there. Yeah, well, if he's already won down to that bowl, I don't think it affects. No. Um, so I don't think you fear a bowl when it's won down, even though it is short. I mean, that's a little tricky because he's holding shot. So. Hmm. And now he might look at changing hands, mightn't he? And with the position of his first two bowls over the jack, do you think he might look at um, trying to just... A bit of movement of the jack there or not? I think or, I would. Let's see. I, yeah. I think I'd be wanting to play the ditch side and try and trail jack, you know, yep. six inches for yep. four. Nothing more. It's draw a shot, and if you touch the jack, you, you make four. Both bowls will worry him here when he's when he's playing here. He'd be worried about selling out. Yep. I think that's one thing as players we need to learn to not fear. So he's staying on his backhand. Backing himself to get around that blue or under it as he did last time for the shot. Yeah, and I think that sort of thing oh. happens because we're worried about selling out. Yeah. So we, we tentatively play them a little. And you can see there he had perfect line. So, that, you know, he, he can trust his delivery that he's going to hit the right line to bring it back to the centre line. And so he did that. Um, so, yeah, you, you've got to learn to trust your delivery that you're hitting the line. There ain't no way I'm going to be hitting that short bowl up if I've got the, the right weight because I know my line's spot on, you know. So Pretty good bowl here too. Yes, yeah, very good bowl coming in here. Might just be through. That's a fair effort. Yep. So it looks like we might Hill, be all nice... tied up. Yeah, the go the hill, eh? I like that. There's so many good shirts around, aren't there? And that's a Jury Hill one, representing Wanganui uh, from Kalen. Gary Cotter with the Cambridge Blue. Central Cambridge Club. Measuring for the This might be there. the first single. Well, Tony Terry said that the red front left bowl was the shot before, so I'm presuming he's correct. I've taken this, one out. Yeah, I'm because I'm, Tony Terry said this bowl was originally the shot. Okay. Before those shot bowls were played. Yeah, which is correct. Yep. So, so our marker is on to it. <laughs> and he's certainly smiling and about the fact he got that right. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the he's got the blue lollipop up now, so that's good. <laughs> so, in fact, it was a single two. So that's our first single of the day. Ties us all up at eight each. So we've. Uh, shown you what the uh, the draw is here we're watching this particular match but um, where we can we'll, we'll update you on the other games in progress because uh, 
I know it can be quite frustrating. You're following another player here and you can see him, him or her in the background and you would like to know how they're getting on. So we'll just um, try and update you. He says, putting a bit more pressure on our Bulls New Zealand broadcast team there. <laughs> So Cotter playing the ditch hand here. Um, I think that forehand is a left hander. And as you've seen, both players hitting the centre line really good, which is one of the key things in lawn bowls. If, if you don't normally hit the centre line, you normally can't win the games. And from a even from a coaching perspective, Dave, um, it's one of the most key things. I know a, a to B is important, but hitting the centre line is essential yeah, to be able to win. You're dead right, um, and it's it's funny. Like the, the the game's simple, we make it as difficult as hell for ourselves. But it's so simple because all you got to do, all you got to do is send the bowl down the right line at the right speed. Two things. That's all you got to get right. And the easier of those two things to get is definitely yes. the line. Correct. So you, if you can nail that centre, if you if you can trust your delivery and your setup that you're going to hit the correct line every time, then you're 50% of the way towards delivering a perfect bowl. So you're dead right, Mark, nailing the centre line. And these guys have done it the first four bowls down there. They've got their lines yeah. absolutely spot on. So and this is going to be just, pretty good too. It is, and he's nailed the line again. And so all you've got, they, they, both these bot guys can trust their deliveries that they're going to hit the line. So the focus for them is just how fast I bowl this damn thing. And we saw there with Kalen two shortish bowls. He was disappointed with his second, but he added that bit of extra weight for this next. And now Cotter does the same. Yeah, that's a great, yeah, great bowl here. Think yeah, that's right. It is a simple game. <laughs> it is. It's, we make yeah. it hard. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We make it as hard as hell for ourselves when really it's quite simple. I think Caelan will play the backhand still here because he can just land on the bowler just off the, just off the inside of it. So he shouldn't fear trying to draw a shot here. That's, that's good advice too, Mark, that even though... If, if you're down the other end, you can see, oh, if I get round my short bowl, land a jack, and it might trail to, you know, my own or whatever. Um, like this. If he plays the bowl, yeah, Perfect. absolutely. It, nothing oh, to fear. That, that was really good. Down to that Great blue bowl. bowl, but no fear. Great bowl. A lot of people may have considered swapping hands there, whereas yeah. trusting the hand that I can hit the centre line all day, and if I just get A to B right, I'll draw a shot. And that's what Kalen's done there. So... Really good, showing some real good experience from um, from a newer bowler. And when you look at that head again, you'll see his bowls pretty much all on the line, aren't they? And so too are Cotters. Yeah, Cotters He's close here. To play a similar shot, yeah. He is really close. He has got this. Great shot. What a shot. Oh, oh, he just didn't oh. have enough legs. Just another yeah. 18 inches of weight or a foot of weight, it would have shunted the bowl off the head, but... A little unlucky there. I'd still be pretty okay with that in the game. Like, if that was me having that result, at least I'm in the area and I've given Bob Bowl some chances. Yep. So there's the bowl from Kalen, and here's the follow up one from Cotter. Hey, there was nothing wrong with that, was it? That was, yeah, as you said, Dave, just a, an ounce extra weight, and he would have pushed it out for maybe two. Yep. But uh, we're standing here now watching the Jack. Sent down to the feet of the marker Tony Terry. Kalen hits the front for the first time in the game at nine to eight. Just see what sort of a bearing that'll have on the game, whether he can kick away now or whether Gary will um, come charging back. And it's as we predicted, down though, we've. As we predicted, we've had uh, two singles in a row now, and I think this yeah, might, yeah. You might see that that might be a bit of a trend now because the guys have really got to grips with the, the rink. So we could see um, a lot tighter game from here on. So we see they're, they're playing one hand, aren't they, now? That um, Kalen's playing backhand both ways. And 
Cotter that yeah, he's playing Cotter, the opposite. On a, he's on the wider arc coming back at the jet. Yeah. And this is this is yeah. magical. Oh my gosh, he's nailing it. He certainly has found this hand. But when you look at that green of Huellas, he also has nailed it. That's right on the centre line. This won't be far away either. Yep. Yeah, this is really good. Right. This is top notch. Oh. Top notch stuff. Oh, gosh. Hitting their straps now, the guys. So I don't think Gary should swap here either. He should just persevere down here with this ball. Yeah. Absolutely. The marker wouldn't be too keen to walk close to that because <laughs> it looked to be on, a, on the verge of tipping over. And if it did, it might squirt the jack back to Connor's bowl. We have a look at it here. Yeah. This this he will look like away. He's missed his line this time. Yeah. And he's punching up the front white pole almost. That's a nice little line there for Kalen to play. I think Kalen should be reaching here too. Um, like here he can reach under his own bowl, sit out the second shot and touch the jack as well. Yeah. So he can actually turn yeah. this head into quite a good head if he reaches, rather than just trying to dead draw. 100% agree, Mark. This is yeah. a, a prime example of, you talked earlier on about having no fear. Well, he definitely shouldn't have any fear about arriving to that head. And that's, you know, he'd be disappointed to finish a yard short there. There's so many chances for him to really turn this head into a, Lock it up big time for himself if he reach if he had reached that blue bowl and and once again no fear of giving it away that it's quite often we are too scared to give the shot away and change but if he changed that head there it would have really locked it up for him and made it incredibly difficult difficult for Gary to yeah I think if he think... played just under his white bowl of about uh, two feet of yes. Wait, he can yes. flick off the bowl, get the jack, and, and now this is what's happened to him now. Jack in the ditch, and he's one down. Yep. And that's and probably And it won't be beaten. That's a top shot. That was a great bowl for yeah. Gary. And yeah. Changed his hand. Unfortunately for... confidence. Yeah, unfortunately for Kalen, he, he left that open for it to happen, though. He did. And that's exactly what we were talking about, Mark, you and I. With, with, if he'd been able to change that head up, it would have locked it up for himself. But um, sometimes we're a bit tentative when we're holding the shot because we're scared to give it up. Something the Australians are very good at. They, they'll, even though they're holding a, a head, they know it looks too pretty for the opposition, so they'll change it themselves before giving the opposition a chance to do it. And, th and that, that's, that's, that was his intention with that shot, wasn't it? He, he did play underneath his, his own bowl, his short bowl, and looked to sit that blue, but it was just his weight, which you can see was way shot. That's not a bad effort, isn't it? Yeah, that's a good Unbeatable recovery. shot in the ditch. Shot. Yep. Pretty good second shot. Alan's there talking to his dad by the looks of it. Hmm. Well, he's looking for a power aid. <laughs> I'm not sure. He's coming. He might be close here. Yeah. yeah this could be two. Oh, this, oh this. what a bowl. No, he's played <laughs> it. Oh, oh, oh. Great bowl. That, that's a bowl for bowl. sure. And two outstanding bowls to finish the end there from Gary. Change of leader again. It's now Gary hitting the front 10 to 9 with that two. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a bit of a ding-dong battle here too. Right to the wire by the looks of it now. And both players playing similar lengths, which is interesting as well. So both playing with a mat about three or four metres out and the jacks down by the tees. That's one of those, another one of those 
situations where quite often if you're comfortable you know even if the opposition are playing your length if you're comfortable there then there's no need to really go changing it it's um it's when you're getting dominated at a certain length that you possibly have to think about it i think sometimes we get carried away with changing the length for changing the length's sake and we end up mucking ourselves up instead of the opposition <laughs> Well, what we should realise is we just won. If we dropped the mat where the jack was and we put the the, um, the the jack down where the mat was at the other end, we would actually be playing the same length that we just won. <laughs> Sometimes we yeah. do overthink it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Here's a good start from Kalen. And again, look at those two balls. As you've talked about getting your line right, David, it's, uh, it's uh, one of the two things you need. And... They're just pretty much nailing it all the time at the moment. To, but to be fair, they should be at this level. We yes. are in a national yeah. quarterfinal. Um, you would expect that to be hitting the centre line from here. And it's a really good reply again here as well from Gary. Especially when you're indoor and there's no wind to affect <laughs> things. Uh, you know, once you've got your once you've got your line sorted out, Mark's right. These guys should be hitting their line because. Uh, it's the it's the easier part of the equation, so and pretty but good bowl you've still here. got to do it and, and the good news is they are doing it and that's a great bowl from Kalen. Nice track again here coming in too. This is close to the jack. Yes, Mr. Jack. Had a wee glimpse at it on the way past. So you've been up all night playing chess, Mark, have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, a little bit trickier when you're away to do that, although it doesn't normally stop me. But... <laughs> no. And you play it in, in your head anyway, don't you, a lot of the time, so <laughs> yeah. it makes up for it. <laughs> you know, I've uh, clearly been up here supporting um, my wife, Janine, who's played good really good, and she, she did she... play good. So a change of hand there from Huella just gets in... Maybe caught his line, but I think he's just one down. He should probably swap hands yeah. here so that he doesn't punch in the front white. But he might be tempted to tack a little, try and wick off that bowl and grab the jack. So yeah, well, you see where his two bowls are over the jack. Handy placement for him. Yeah, so looking to play the ditch hand up towards the short white bowl on the left. And I'm grabbing the jack for three. That's what it looks like he's going to play. That's what he's gone for. Yeah. And with that weight, he is. Oh, gee, <laughs> not far off it, but. A bit of risk, but reward was there. The problem is with the risk here, he's now dropping a soft three, unfortunately, because Caelan will draw a third here. Oh, early call. Yeah. Right, well, he, he he's, done, he he's got every bonus so far. And yes, like, he has. Yes, he has. I hope and, you haven't put the hex on him. No, well, look, it's, the bowl is two feet to the right, which means he has a four feet radius. Um, and the way he's been playing, I expect him to put the ball in the four feet radius. He's certainly taken advantage of every opportunity so far. This is Kalen Huella from Dury Hill representing Wanganui. A young man him, who's already got an incredible future. <laughs> you have the jinxed him. You hexed him. <laughs> Commentators <laughs> hex, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if you'll still be talking to me later. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll give him your phone number. Uh, well, yep. actually, we're, we're actually related um, through Janine's, um, related to um, Galen and, and Philip Huella. <laughs> so, 
See if any of the family. It doesn't mean to say you won't get it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) See if we're still related now. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. And and give us a list of your relatives, Janine uh, um, and uh, Kaylin. Uh, just take out Mark Noble. <laughs> yeah. So there we are so looking we at. Uh, so is that Briar on the green seventeen yes. five up over Lindley? Yeah. Yep. So that's. She's obviously coasting along really good, and has been playing really good yeah. bowls from what I've seen. Um, Especially yep. this morning, she was on fire this morning, um, winning comfortably something like 21, 8 or 9. Oh. So it's the women's semi-finals being played at the moment as well. Uh, the other one... Uh, I'll have a look at that score in a moment. Yeah, so that's Audrey Stevenson. Uh, close ball here. This is really good. Good yeah. opening balls from both yeah, players. Sure. But, uh... uh, Kaylin's not bad here again. Well, that's really good balls. Giving himself a chance too by sitting that bowl backwards like that. It gives him the opportunity to arrive with his next bowl to the shot bowl as long as uh, Gary doesn't change things here. Gary looks like he's swapping hands here. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he yeah. did. I actually think he should play the same hand and actually play the shot before Caelan. Correct. This is another one of those examples we were talking about earlier on where... Change things up, yes, and he is. He's switching back to his four, and a bit undecided, but change things up now before your opponent does it. Yeah, I mean, if Kalen was to sit that bowl out, Kalen would hold three, and then Gary three. would be yeah. under pressure. So this is the right bowl. Yep. yep. And, and even though he hasn't changed the head, he's got a nice bowl on play here. He has. He had good speed to change the head as well. If he had got to his own bowl there, it would have changed things up. So he had the good. He had the right option there. Yeah, and that bowl's in the pocket, as we call it. Um, you know, yep. two or three feet past the jack and in play. Yeah. I question Caitlin changing his hand here, unless he's looking to play underneath everything to get to the blue bowl, which is what he looks like he's doing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I like that shot. He's got the result though. Well, he got it's the result. Yeah, result yeah, way to argue. <laughs> <laughs> There's never the wrong hand if we get the result, of course, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we all, do there, s- he? we all see it different. He may have. He may have two. Definitely two, I think. Looking well, at remember we playing s- this way on the on the last end. Sorry, Mark. When uh, Gary played a stunner, didn't he? Put the jack in the ditch, and he's playing that hand again. Well, I think he'll be attacking here. I'll be nothing sure. Looks like he's attacking. Yep. He looks a little wide. Just a smidgen wide. He gets the back of the bowl. That would have been probably enough to... But he's got two back bowls in play, and now um, Kalen, if he is, even if he isn't holding two, he's, he's got some choice options here. He could play down and sit the purple bowl through for four. And Leaves play that shot. exposed at the back, though. But if he misses that, he covers the back, um, Dave, and that's what I'm suggesting, that he could play to sit the bowl for four, and if he gets the bowl, he holds four, and if he misses, he covers the back. That's what I call him the, the 50-50 shot where we're trying to play two bowls with the one bowl. But, yeah, no, he's going to have a talk about it, eh? Yeah. So I think he's probably only hold... He might only hold one. If he's holding two, I think he should cover. And that's Evan Scrivenger, rinkside coach. And um, Evan's a very good um, singles player on his own right as well. He plays singles for the Wanganui um, senior team.
Okay, so we've got Nicole Toomey leading 15-1. Mm. Right. I think the other one was, um, looked like Roger Glendinning was down to Craig Tinker Craig from Tinker. Southland. 15-7, yeah. I think that score was. It's the men's quarter-final. Quarter he went. So, he uh, went for the cover. Yep. With this bowl, and he's he's definitely got the the backest bowl <laughs> as we call it. I'll see. I think pretty sure we'll still see a shot in anger here. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, yep. It's not big weight, but he will be attacking the area. And yep, he is attacking. And he's close. He's close. He's got this. This could be four. Oh, if it had Ooh, kicked off that, gee. he'll get shot here. Yeah, very sure. close. He's definitely. Yeah, I think he's definitely got the shot out of it. This means we'll probably be all tied up at 11 all. Tony Terry's helping us out with the red paddle up before the players get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's talking to the two guys as he's doing it. <laughs> I'll let you guys sort it out, but it's one red. <laughs> yep. Just confirm what I've said. <laughs> it is. Tied up. A We're seeing some really good shots here, aren't we? And, and as you said, it's a national semi-final, so quarter-final. So we've. Um, oh, it is a semi-final, isn't it? Quarter so final. we've got uh, quarter-final. Quarter final, final, right it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a, I need a chess brain to work that out. <laughs> um, Eleven all. But we're seeing some r outstanding bowls from these two. Really good stuff, and and a great um, learning watch for for bowlers who are out here watching at the moment just to see how the uh, the top players think and and what this uh, shot selection is and why i think that's great so you two uh, thanks dave and mark for providing that that's the addition to what people can actually see is just explaining stuff getting into their brains a wee bit yeah look we can't call all the shots they're going to play but we try and call them as we sort of see them and a lot of the time we're right. The odd occasion we'll, yeah. we'll be wrong. But, um. but also you provide options too, you know, and that's standing on them or before you get onto a mat and you go through your routine. Um, often there are, you know, more than one shots which could work. And uh, so you've given giving us the options as well, which is great. Yeah, because we do all see the game a little bit different at times, but... It's all about percentages, and I think Dave will agree with that, that if we play the percentage bowls, we normally get the right results. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a, a few things come into it. One is scoreboard. You know, where are we in the game? Where, <clears throat> you know, are we miles behind? Are we in front? Are we, you know, so if you're in front and comfortably in front, then it's a little bit more conservative, perhaps. Uh, but definitely percentages. What, what? are the chances of the shot that I'm thinking about being successful. What are the chances of it being successful? And if you think, well, I've got so many options down there on that hand, I'm 75% I'm sure I'm going to get this, versus the other shot I'm thinking at, well, oh, I've really... Have a look at these first three bowls. <laughs> yeah. Great <laughs> bowls here. So, Jack, Great Jack bowls. Lever all about a foot away, a front knocker, and now a, a trailer jack. So that's three brilliant bowls. Yes, you're right, Dave. And, and also, that, you know, and this is singles where you're making your own decisions. You're not relying on a skip down the other end to tell you, eh? It's a, it's a, s a stressful, yep. it can be a very stressful game, but most enjoyable when you're the only one who makes the decisions. Oh, look at this again. Really good bowls coming through. So the shot has That's gone right. from Cotter to Huella to Cotter to Huella. So. Yep. And this Every bowl's changing the head. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. Now we've got a change of hand from Cotter. Oh. Someone moving down the end, possibly. Well, that's where quite often in singles too. It is good. Um, it's good to see kalen has got um, some help there on the on the bench with a coach that he trusts and and a guy that he obviously they know. Uh, the coach would know Kalen's game very very well, uh, and it's good to ha in singles to have a coach there just just to chew the fat with to discuss these ideas. If you're betwixt and between on a couple of shots, have a chat to someone. It's always good to have uh, a coach on the end of the rink just to to help you uh, arrive at the correct decisions. Now, there are options going through his mind, Mark. Stay um, on that hand that he's playing well or play the other hand he's playing. I, I think he should be on the backhand here. 
He's still got a bowl yeah. after this too, so there's... Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, I think here he can he can land his own front bowl, come off it. If he gets the gap between the blue and the white, he lands the back bowl. So like this, oh, this, oh. this is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I think I think we'll give him a pass mark for that one. Absolutely, a brilliant shot. And that looks like it will count. So it looks like it may be two. He's got two. Uh, I think here we'll see forehand reach because Trail Jack will be a monster on yep. on the um, backhand for the, for the left-hander. Because when we see the head again, you'll see it's all Gary Cotter's bowls over the jack. Yeah, he just needs to be up here because he's got two oh, bowls two to land. Yeah, yep. Anything but a bowl wide is probably the best way to describe uh, this. He's a bit wide, yep. So, so that's one of these ones where we've actually got to be more narrow than wide. We get chances with results narrow. If we're coming under landing the second closest white bowl, we would probably get the shot. Don't don't talk about bonus bowls, Mark. Yeah, this one's a little harder though, because he <laughs> he's actually got to get under or around his short bowl that doesn't count. So this this bonus shot's actually a lot harder than the other ones. Or sitting into his own. Let's have a look at the head again. What, yeah, what does he just do? doesn't want to be too quick at it, though. Um, no, too no. quick under spills Jack, and then he, you know. So the good news is he played with reasonable line trying to drop under with nice weight. That's yep. what he's trying to do. Oh, and it's a it's a fair effort. Yeah, he can't overly play that too quick because he doesn't want to be under and slice the Jack and drop one. So, Huella up by 13 to 11. This is a close match. A four on the first for Cotter, responding from Huella with a two, and then there was a two, threes. So, that's a final score, is it? 18 to 12? Oh, no, no. So, that's uh, Glasson versus uh, Morris Symes, I think, isn't it? Symes, yeah. 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 And so Glasson's 18-12 up on that one. And we believe yep. that Tony Grantham has won his game against the far north. That was uh, George from the Russell Club. Yeah, we. I'm not sure of the actual final score, but um, Tony Grantham hurt his knee, I think, yesterday, told me he was going to play off the wrong leg today, so or the right leg, as I call it. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not sure if he did, but he reckoned he was going to do his trial ends <laughs> off off the uh, leg that we're not supposed to use. Um, Tony well, Tony actually won twenty one four, so a really good win from Tony. Twenty one four, yeah. So yeah. if he did play off the wrong leg, I'm actually loving that. <laughs> <laughs> Two good Two opening very, bowls. Very good openers here again. Yes, good stuff. <laughs> first, first, we talk continuously about first bowl effect effectiveness well these guys are certainly um, achieving brilliantly with their first bowls and, and the good news was when you play their first ones like this it just relieves the pressure on the next bowl even if we are still one down we can still draw quite confidently because we feel okay holding one or running one down with a bowl within six inches like the two players have got here and here's another great bowl come on how good's this very good stuff <laughs> Tony's that's saying that's counting. Weight. Yeah, Tony's saying yeah. it's two to Kalen. I mean, that's pretty outstanding stuff. <clears throat> so, but, but unsure on what hand he's playing, but he's back to the stitch hand. He's actually played the stitch hand really good as well. Um, hmm. He's been in the area a lot when he's played down here with a little bit of weight. It looks like he is. He's trying to trail Jack or land a back white bowl. Well, even though he's missed, it's a good home. Now, do you play tactically here? Does uh, Huella think, well, Cotter's done up to me before. Do I just get up and over and match that last bowl? I Leave think the I head would. alone? Yeah, I don't think he wants to fill any of the gaps that are there. Like, he wouldn't want to draw no. another one alongside it and make the target zone any bigger. There's a nice gap between the white bowl and the jack, and that gap where he's getting close to filling. But even though this is a good bowl, now there are options to kill it, and 
Um, so it might be yeah. might be a good bad one. A little bit of an experience there. I agree with you, Mark. I mean, I think yeah, you can see now that uh, Cotter on the attack here. And, oh, he's uh, got away with it, though. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's got yeah. away with it. But uh, and this is where sometimes you know. Young Kalen, he had, he, well, he had the two shots, and that's where you've got to be thinking about the head. And I agreed with you, Mark. He should have gone running for cover around the back uh, and not be too greedy. You know, he just thought, oh, I can draw another one here. I'll hold three. Yeah, sure, you hold three, but then you fatten the target up and you've given your opponent a real good opportunity to to kill the end, as, as Mark said. So round the back with that with, with his third one and then maybe you draw your third your fourth, your third shot with your last bowl I think yes yeah. like th this bowl here is pretty critical as well like Kevin's, yes. he's holding three but what he doesn't want to do is get a bowl jack level fatten it up yeah he doesn't want, want to give to Gary anything that he can land to reduce the count so it's pretty important that he draws even short would be okay here but nothing jack level. This is where the line taking becomes really crucial. Centre line is important here. See, this is looking like it may help his opponent. No, he's okay, I think. No, he's sure. okay. He's passed and he, yeah. It's still fattened up that zone because now if Gary has, lands, yes, it has. If Gary lands that bowl, he can now cut it down to one quite, yes. quite comfortably by landing that split between the two, yep. the second and third shot. Uh, whereas if um, another foot of running onto the centre line would have left him with pretty much nothing. Yep. So now Gary can actually draw with confidence, as we call it, which yep. is like a foot past or through the jack, yep. like it's not there. It is a big bowl four down, though. Uh, the track looks good. Yeah, just a tad a here's, bowl. Here's the High, left coming he? back. Yes. Uh, just Might have cut it to two. Yep. But like he have you got the inside of that bowl, he was only ever going to be one down and one um, down, yes. Yep. Sometimes so when we've got two. a when we've got a really good two, we should just leave it alone. And go, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm pretty two. sure it's only two, but Tony two three. Is, no, three. Tony oh, three's got Gosh. three pedals up, so Kalen sort of got away with that, that head, even though he did play a reasonably good end. He did give Gary some outs. And got away with it, as you say. So, uh, opened up a bit of a gap now. Opened up a bit of a break. He's actually brought the mat up a little bit more than we've seen, too. The mat's a fair way up the green here. Jack's still down by the tee. I think you see the mat's over halfway up. Yep. Just reminding you, the other quarterfinals, uh, Roger Glendinning against Craig Tinker. Glendinning of Geraldine and Tinker from Waikiki. We've seen Grantham beat George from Russell, 21-4. Uh, uh, Symes and Glassham, that was relatively close when we last saw it. That's the men's. We'll get those final scores or progress to you as we go on. Um, Brian Atkinson was well ahead of... Uh, Lindy O'Callaghan of Alexandra, game's probably over, and Nicole Stevenson, and Nicole uh, was ahead of um, Audrey Stevenson in that second of the semi-finals. Nicole Toomey. So again, we're starting with pretty good weight. We haven't seen any of these bowlers really lose their weight. You know, early on, those first three or four ends where you know it's always uh, that period where you just fine-tuning things, don't you? But you know, they've, they've been pretty consistent. Yeah, a little bit of nerves in that come in as well when you start these yeah. games. <laughs> these cannons a little especially bit knowing it, Especially knowing they're on the screen and you're talking about them, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, like if you haven't played on a TV rink, it's just overwhelming the first time. Um, so it, it can be quite hard as a player if we've not been out on that coverage before. And this is a pretty good bowl again here. Good 
getting the fingers out to see who's got the shot here. See if I can find out how much time we've got left in this game. So, I'll see if I can get that information. As the quarterfinals are still time limit of two hours, the women's semi finals, which are happening now, are still, they are no time limit from here on in. England swapping hands here. Does not want to be narrow and promote the blue. I suppose he sensed that out there was beating that blue, which is uh, the wider of the bowls, would have given him another shot. So I suppose it was a target for him there. Some rapturous applause from one of the other rinks. So I'm led to believe we've got about 30 minutes left of this game. So oh, right. From the time. So still plenty of time for Gary to turn this five shots around. He's actually got a good hit here. He's got two bowls in yeah. play. Chance to touch the jack or land the white bowl, which he's close to doing here. He has played a bomb here. This oh, is shot. yeah. His head's building up good for him. If, if Caleb does. does not get another one in there, he could drop four. He could. Yep, it's set up nice. If he, yeah, this is a big bowl from Caelan, this one. Hugely important bowl. Especially if he has only one down, he's really got to get another one in there. Absolutely. But these he are the misses, he leaves himself exposed to dropping that four, as you say. Just got to, uh, Gary would just have to sit that second shot. Yeah, these Back are the a bowls. couple of rolls. Yeah, these are the bowls that win games, I think, at this level. Um, when you're in a little bit of trouble on the head, you've got to play a good one. So he's changed his hand, playing the forehand now. Uh, if he's up. Not sure he's there with us. No, he's not up. And this is definitely a big freebie here. Chance to sit the white ball for four. So if Gary's going to get back in the game, this is a great opportunity. It's actually no danger playing to sit that bowl either. If he's a fraction wide, he could chip his own bowl onto the jack for three. There's Craig Tinker. 17-10, that score. He's playing Glenn Dinning, Roger Glenn Dinning of Geraldine. Um, and Audrey Stevenson is making a bit of a comeback from 15-1 to 16-7 now, so some good stuff from Audrey coming back. Right, here right, we go. big bowl. Oh, I don't Searching know. for that white. Yeah, he's don't, wide, isn't he? Yeah, I don't like the line. Yeah, he was wide, yeah. I, I think he could afford to be a bit narrow because he could punch his own bow onto the jack. Own onto day. the jack, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, it's only a single, so a big miss opportunity. So we've seen... Uh, Kalen getting a bit of luck, I suppose. You make your own luck, and the opposition have got to take advantage of those opportunities. But in the previous end, um, when he's packed the head rather than covering, and uh, and Gary just couldn't quite take advantage of that. We'll just see and if we then, can uh, get... Uh, it's a get, single. Sorry, John. We'll just see if we can get over and look at some scores um, while the two players have just wandered off for a minute. I see Nathan Morris Morris Simes sitting, sitting down. Back. I see Nathan yeah. Glasson sitting, uh, standing up the back there, so Morris, I'm sitting down, so that's obviously, Glasson has won that one, I would say. And the actual score is 16-12 in the current game we're watching too, which I'm sure will get updated shortly. Yep, yep. Unless Morris is sitting there with his bowls in his bag ready to play again, uh, <laughs> David. I, I don't uh, know he, then why uh, Nathan that, would have left his out. <laughs> No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Morris. Uh, uh, 
so 1710 Southland over South Canterbury, that's uh, Tinker over Glendinning. 167, that's Toomey over Stevenson and the women's. Okay, there's only those two matches play, playing at the moment. So Symes is out, Glasson goes through. Grantham is through. Yep. So it's a great facility here, uh, Mark, isn't it? Really fantastic with uh, lots of seating for people. Good facility indeed. Yeah, look, and I think they've got boards they can actually put on the green to put uh, seats in that on as well. So they've got the works here. I know they have lots of functions where they do that sort of thing here. So it's a, it's a very great complex. It is, it's, and, and we're, we're blessed with some, with what, four of these around the uh, country as, at the moment as we look at this um, updated uh, men's quarterfinal results, the ones that we've got up there, uh, Tony Grantham, as we've mentioned, beating Anthony George from Russell, and Nathan Glasson victorious over Morris Symes. Our feature game's still going, and as we know, Craig Tinker is uh, ahead of Roger Glendinning in the other game that's still going. But uh, yes, we've got these you know, we've got one in Auckland, Hastings, Wellington at Nine Eye, and of course at Dunedin. And uh, there is talk, there's lots of talk around the country about other centres wanting to be able to have these sorts of facilities. And I think it, um, there's a, I know Christchurch has been talking about it for a number of years in the Canterbury region. And um, even in Nelson, uh, and I think in your area as well, Mark. Um, so uh, definitely. Um, incredibly huge assets to the sport of, of bowls if we can have these indoor facilities a few more of them around the country would be fantastic yeah, it just means we can play 24 7 doesn't it and it shows even in this event we're playing at eight o'clock at night uh, and that's pretty cool and with that southerly blast that is hitting the country at the moment it's nice to be <laughs> nice and cozy inside and being able to ha have the heaters on <laughs> so just uh, also looking at the women's they're in that semi-final stage where Briar Atkinson has, uh, from Paratutu has beaten Linio Callahan of Alexandra that final score was 21 to 7 And Nicole Toomey from Stokes Valley representing Wellington and was leading Audrey Stevenson of Ramadi representing Carpety. I think I, as I mentioned yesterday, Dave, I'm sorry, when Joe was uh, playing, she we talked about Audrey Stevenson and say how they'd been in a national squad together a few years ago. I think um, Audrey won the national singles in a 2000 and seven or eight or something um and yep. she'd said look all i want to do uh, my aim is to qual to qualify so she's shown great fighting qualities though she not only qualified but she played an extra end uh when she was well advanced in her quarter final what a shot here great uh, ball here great yeah ball. brilliant ball and just guts it out yeah. to get through to a stage where she's against one of the country's leading players uh, now in yep. nicole toomey Yep, and look, you know, Audrey's won about 748 centre titles, I think, too, hasn't she, or something? She's a fantastic player, and, 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 and still is a truly competitive player, so uh, no surprise for me to see her name still featuring in the nitty-gritty stages of this event. Yeah, and, and clearly still winning centre titles if she's playing here. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. To, this, to this current season. Now. Yeah, no, 61. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? 61 centre titles. And, and who she's playing, Nicole, um, she's got very good um, results as well recently with a couple of um, bronze medals, I think, at the Com Games. Yep. 20, 2022, so in Birmingham. Another great shot here from Kaylin. No yeah, yeah, dangerous. No dangerous. Oh, he's made little three of us, I think. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come there. That was that is, brilliant. Yeah. That is a bomb. Um, this now puts this last bowl from Gary. Really, this is a huge bowl. This he, essentially he game. He hasn't got a lot of options either. He hasn't got a lot of options here. This is one of those where uh, Kalen has really tidied it up nicely for himself here. And Correct. There's no big targets. There's, you know, it's a very, very difficult shot he's got here. 
Your ditch hand is where he's got to play, which he's lined up on, and he can only just try and draw. Try and draw. Can yeah. you know, just be arriving a little bit, perhaps. So the hand but, will turn um, back nicely, so as long as he's yeah. in the area. Yeah. He, like, this is just down to speed now. He's too quick. Yes, he's just going to... And so, dare I say it, this is another, um, Kalen has a freebie, as we call it. Well, all three of his bowls are, have been excellent weight. So here we go. This is the women's semi-finals. Atkinson of Paratutu has gone through to the final. Uh, Lindley O'Callaghan of Alexandra which was her victim in the semi-finals. And that other match still being played. The last we saw it was 17-6 uh, to six in favour of Nicole Toomey. As we see this bonus shot, is it? Is he going to take advantage of it? What do you think, Mark? Is he going to be up? He's oh, not. He's pulled up short. Yep. Yep. But I, look, he's played three goodies on. I don't think he'd be too worried about missing that one. Um, I mean, clearly that might hurt him later, but... What he doesn't want to do is Seven. over overplay it and trail Jack and and uh, loot, you know, drop a shot. It's an update there on that score. Nicole leading 17-9 now. Yes, I think Audrey's done good in that game from 15-1 to get back to 17-9. Uh, clearly the game is turning a little. Um, so if, if Audrey can you know get another couple of twos and put some scoreboard pressure on. And there is no time limit for the game, so the goal sort of gets to 21. And now we've got Kalen in a very, very strong position in this game that we're watching. He'll be wanting to really absolutely nail this first bowl here, and that would really put some pressure on, on yeah. Gary. Yeah, any bowl within that six inch range puts the acid on. I mean, this is going to be pretty close to six inches away. Yeah, maybe eight or nine inches, but it puts pressure on the opposition, which is what you want. They met in the first round on Friday morning, and uh, it was the Dury Hill player who won that by 21 to 13. But then uh, Cotter, the, the loser, went on to beat Nathan Glasson, who was seen just get through to the next round. Great, great shot here. Oh, perfect. Great ball. Great ball under pressure, that one. And when I say pressure, what I'm referring to there is scoreboard pressure. Oh, if Kalen's a little narrow here, but he, yes, he's not going to get contact. Or is he? No, he's not. <laughs> oh, contact wouldn't have hurt him, actually, would it? <laughs> no, contact would have been good. Uh, there. Yeah, but the good yeah. news about the last ball he's played, he's in the pocket, as we call it, past the jack and play. Yep, yep. And that's one of the key things. If we're missing, we've got to miss in what we call good areas. That's how we win games. If we miss in good yep. areas, we create play. That, that holding pen, as we call it, that, that area sort of between two and three feet behind the jack is just such a vital area to, to, to try and control that. And at the moment, <laughs> it's Kalen who's got that. You know, That's why Gary would have been very disappointed with the second bowl here to drop it as short as he has because... Little contact on the shot bowl here now, and uh, and Kalen singing ragtime. Correct. Yep, he's looking at forehand now. Play onto the shot, move the jack back. It's in the in the V area, the two bowls, which is the key point. Oh, I don't think he's up with us enough. It's, doesn't want to promote the front one though. But he's landed in a good home. Contact on the shot bowl, the jack's popping back that way. So now Kalen's got to decide. This is another crucial part of the game. He's coming up to have a look, which is a good thing, but he's got to decide here what to adjust. Does not want to, doesn't want to move the bowl. Yes. Does not want that great to fall ball. over. If that falls over and opens up the jack, <laughs> it will be big trouble for him. <laughs> Kalen will be, you know, he'll be attacking here. He'll probably be a little bit more aggressive with this with this bowl, I'd imagine. He's um, 
He looks at the score too, doesn't he? Yeah, the very front bowl actually may be blocking most of the two bowls. He might only be able to see a quarter of a bowl. Once again, good just to get that bounce the ideas off the coach on the bank. You know, what am I? I'm looking at this. I'm looking at that, and the coach can <coughs> guide. So the guide two the player as to what's the best shot to play, and the, and it's still got to be the player's decision. It's still got to be yep. the one that the player is confident in playing. But it just helps to bounce the ideas off of a coach. That's for sure. So the two shots I think he can look at is on the ditch side, he can play to land the last bolt and popping the jack out to the right, holding one, or he can play the forehand trying to land the shot bolt and pop the jack back for two, yeah. which is what he's just and doesn't, to do. And doesn't need to go hard at it, does he? It's just no. a matter of yeah, reaching he's, it, he's popping close. the jack back anyway. He's, yeah. he's close here, boys. He's in the area yeah. here. Yeah. He is. He's, he's, played a, he's played a oh, bomb. Oh, this is great. Oh, oh. How good a oh, shot! Great so shot. Oh, great shot. What a... That is a great shot. Brilliant shot. Yep. And he's turned it over for one up. And he gets applause <laughs> from his opponent, Gary Cotter. Yeah, there's some good sportsmanship going on, not just in this game, but in a lot of the other games as well. We've seen that. And to be fair, if your opponent's played a bomb like that, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't say, you know, well done. No. You're not happy about it, but <laughs> it's part and parcel of the game. So, so be... Ditch Hand for Cotter, do you think, here? Yes. yes ditch, ditch Hand land shot bowl for two. Yep. <clears throat> here he goes. Promoter zone or yes. sit this always wide. He's played these wide quite a few times. I was, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> he just you're dead right. He's played all of those all of those reaching shots with too much green and you know, at least if you're tight you're you're gonna something's gonna happen. You 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 know, you might not miss target A, but when you're tight into a head like that, options B and C come into play, but when you're wide, there's nothing happening. Yeah, I think I said that in one of the games yesterday that when I first started skipping, the first information I got given is never miss wide. Yeah. You can always get a yeah. shot narrow. You can never normally get one wide. Yeah. So now it's 20 is all but now, Kalen. Um, definitely in the box seat. Absolutely. Still important that he puts the first one in close and he's... Uh, the, both these players have done that throughout the match. I've been very consistent. And we know the other men's quarterfinal still going with Roger Glendinney and Craig Tinker. That's still going. You can see the players in the background still playing. Another sh slightly shorter length than what we've been uh, seeing these guys play. Kalen made a... F May have felt that he's feeling it a bit better on the shorter lengths. He just left his first bowl a little bit short, though, of where he would have wanted it. Good reply. That's probably shot. They're only about a foot short, those bowls, if that. Just talking about that uh, Roger Glendinning and the <coughs> Geraldine Club. I mean, it's one of those very small clubs. It's uh, representing South Canterbury and... I must say I spent a lot of time at in Geraldine with uh, family members down there. So that's so, the two games going. Um, yeah. Nicole, Nicole Toomey leading 18-9. Yeah. And Craig Tinker leading Roger Glenn Dinning. But, uh, you know, we see over the years, don't we, that small clubs, really small clubs, and I, I don't know, I would imagine that Geraldine might have a membership of 40 or something. You know, I, I don't know for sure. And they've produced some really good ball. Well, there was, uh, uh, what was his name, uh, Milne, who won the national singles title way back in the probably 70s or 80s. They've had some really good players out of a small club. And um, and it doesn't doesn't mean much, does it? You can have outstanding players in a small club who get through to, and win national titles. It's Robin Milne was his name, I think. So, you know, small clubs produce top players and they can compete easily against 
clubs that have got 200 players. Yeah, how about this? Is he up? He's, He's not, not quite going to run it. That's a good head from even though he doesn't have a back bowl. Um, Gary's got to be careful not to knock a bowl in. Yeah, you don't want to give it away, do you? <laughs> not now. <laughs> no. So it's, I think he does have to play the same hand and try and drop under that last white bowl. Even if he touches Jack, he could make three of it on a draw shot. Does not want to be wide hitting that white bowl. Well, coached him around it quite well. Oh yeah, that's a that's yeah. a pretty good bowl. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Kalen was looking like he was watching that. Only the one it didn't didn't make another. <laughs> I think here, like, interesting here. I know kalen has been playing the backhand for him. I actually think I might swap and play the forehand and try and sit that white bowl down and if I fail I draw around it to get shot or cover those two bowls past. There's no hurry Couldn't to get agree. to 21. Couldn't agree more. I think that's the that's the shot option, definitely the forehand, but it looks like he's lining up on the backhand again. But yeah, that's the shot I would have played too. Just looking to roll my own white bowl over or just sneak past. You might have dead drawn it. I mean, there's he'll, nothing probably prove, he'll probably prove us wrong here and draw the shot. So. No, there's nothing wrong with playing what he's playing. I just feel that the other hand gave him a few more options. Oh, he's dropped it short again. And, and like if the jack gets touched now by Gary, he will make four. He's only got to draw yep. a toucher and the jack moves an inch, it's four shots. Yep. I make it sound easy as only got to. But... <laughs> <laughs> And I guess the only point of this, being a left-hander, his arc back to the jack might actually be through that white bowl. That might be his only problem. Yeah, and he Taking doesn't a long want to time get looking at it. He doesn't want to he, get on the back end of that white bowl, I think. No, he, he doesn't want to be on the back end of the other white bowl. So. No, the white bowl, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. an ugly hit. Even though he's holding it, even though he's yeah. holding it as a chance for four, it's still ugly and quite challenging for him. Yeah. So it's one of these ones, Does he gonna, is he going to just go, look at the scoreboard and go, I'm going for the trail for four? It doesn't look like he is. He's going to play the back handy, and he must have green with this bowl. Cannot afford to be narrow with this. Here he goes. He's making sure he's, he's out He's definitely there. not narrow. <laughs> yeah. He's not well, narrow. It was sure. critical that he does not knock the front white bowl on. He's not bad if he's got the right weight. It will dig back. Well, this is a pretty good effort here, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's got one, which puts him on 13. Oh, two lollipops in Tony's hand. Oh. Yeah, two it is. It two is. Two. Mm -hmm. Well, that's even more reason to be more than, than actually playing the hand he played. That explains the shot that he played. Um, if we're holding two, we shouldn't be trying to over over score there and take a risk and that's the bit we can't notice. tell from in here we can't yep. see yep. which bowls is that it is actually two i think his last bowl drew the second shot you think yeah i think oh, okay. that was the second shot yeah. yeah yeah you could you could actually be right and that might explain that so. but a great bowl if it was from from gary and the key here for him is to not panic, is just play for one shot at a time. Although we've probably only got about 10 minutes left, maybe, in this game, so we can't have long to go here. Oh. Are we? Half an hour, I think. Oh, yep, yeah, still. Half an hour? Oh. Yeah, a lot of time. What is the time? 11.47 by me, so we started yeah. at just after 10, wasn't it? So, yeah. So this is the sort of bowl oh, right. that he's going to have to start Quite with um, from here on in. He wants, you know, he's still got seven odd ends he'll get with this 30 minutes. So seven singles, he wins 21-20. Sounds, sounds easy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, it's funny because Kalen's in the position now where he's got last bowl. Yes. 
and everyone talks about how it's great having last bowl and it's um but you know what when you're on 20 and you only need one and you're not holding the shot and you've got the last bowl on your hand it's it, it just adds all that sort of mental stress and pressure to you to try and get that shot with that last bowl so even though we, we do talk about having last bowl as being a big benefit to you. It can also be huge pressure. And of course, especially if you, like in this situation, if he's three down when he gets to his last bowl, he knows if he fails, the other guy gets to 17 and can go out. That's right. And that creates a different sort of pressure. <laughs> so in that last end, you might... Uh, remember that Kalen had four bowls which were pretty much in a line, weren't they? His, he never varied his weight at all. Right, so yeah. But he has here. This is fantastic. Yeah. Very good bowl. Once again, even though it's the shot and it's a very good bowl, it does give Gary some good options here. He can, he can use that bowl. He can be just under it to get to the jack. So, yes, sir, whilst Dave he is one down... He's not queuing about it being a fraction short, right? Correct. Which is the key thing. Unfortunately, he's under green this bowl. It's got great weight if he was on the right green line for drawing a shot. And he's got three seconds. We don't, <laughs> we don't know in his mind what he was after there. If he was after yeah. arriving, then he didn't have enough weight and perfect line. <laughs> But if he was dead drawing, he had perfect weight and not enough grass. So yeah. we don't know in his mind. I think he would have been, I think he'll be disappointed that he didn't arrive. But, you know, he's got jack level weight. I think he would have been looking to arrive with that bowl. I agree. So I think he needs to stick to the line that he just played, but add that yard of weight. Yep. So he's got one bowl. He's definitely got to be up with this bowl. Yep. He's going the... down, but he's got a great opportunity here. Same line as his last bowl with another metre of weight, and he's going to get a great result. So here it is. He is... Has he got enough weight? I don't think he has. No, he hasn't got the speed again. He, had he needs to hit his own bowl oh, now. Oh. Hard, yeah, like he has. has. Oh, yeah. Fallen has out. It? It's fallen out. I think he's still... <clears throat> Kalen's looking. Camera angles can be deceptive, of course, we know that, but I think that it might be one to Kalen here. I, well, Tony Terry's definitely looking like he's wanting to use the blue. Yeah, he's not going to play, gonna play it, his last mm -hmm. so it's a This is the last of, of the games on at the moment. Yeah, uh, he's young, he's got good eyes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out. <laughs> yeah. The marker definitely looks like he's packing up. He's putting things in his pocket and getting ready to sign yeah. us. Yeah, he does day. shake hands. Wow. So we have completed the semi finals here at the Somerset Champion of Champions singles in Hastings. Oh, sorry, quarter final, semi finals of the women's. And we see it is now uh, Kite Kalen. Huella has beaten Gary Cotter, so Huella has joined Glasson and Grantham and Tinker. We've heard that Tinker has won his game against Glenn Dinning of Geraldine. And we also have heard that Nicole Toomey has won her semi-final and will play Briar Atkinson in the final. So, uh, outstanding game, guys, wasn't it? Dave, uh, you'd be impressed with what you've seen. I know you hadn't seen uh, Kaelin Huella before, and uh, you'd be impressed with what you've seen from him. Hugely impressive. Yes, very, very, you know, um, just um, looks to have a great demeanour about him as well and um, exudes confidence, great delivery. And, uh, yeah, so I'm so hugely impressed by what I've seen from the young boy. And there we see it, the, uh, the semi-finalists for the men's singles with Craig Tinker to take on Tony Grantham and Nathan Glasson to play uh, Caelan Hulia that we've just seen. And there's the uh, the women's finalists. We see Briar Atkinson and Nicole Toomey, and that's the game that we'll be covering shortly. But um, some uh, good good oh, efforts from from the likes of your Jenny Andersons and your Janine Nobles and things. And uh, you know th th they can be very proud of of what they've achieved at this event as well. 
Absolutely. All right. So we're going to have a look at some highlights probably of this match right now. And then we'll be back for live coverage of the women's final from the Somerset Champion of Champion singles.
enough room, but it will get hitting it.
And Bowls New Zealand's coverage of the Somerset Champion of Champion singles continues here in Hastings and we're right down to the crunch side of things. Our match that we're going to be seeing is the women's final which meet, um, which involves two of the uh, most outstanding current players with this woman here, Nicole Toomey, a former national singles title holder and also a Commonwealth Games representative. She's playing out of Stokes Valley, therefore representing Wellington. And she's up against Briar Atkinson, uh, one of the most outstanding products recently of the famous Paratutu Club, or from Taranaki in general, having moved to Paratutu in recent times. So it is Toomey on the mat and Atkinson in the rear. And I'm joined this time by commentators Alex Reed and Dave Edwards. Clash of the youngsters, really, although both experienced, Alex. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I think um, we were talking just before we went live and Nicole Toomey of the two and Bowles experience is the one that's got more of it, but uh, you wouldn't call either of them older, would you? <laughs> so it's sort of a reflection of, of our, the way our sport's in at the moment, I think, and both of these players will have come through the, the school system and whatnot, and good to see. Yep, it's and Dave, um, great you'll be, to see you'll be pleased to see these. Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, Nicole Toomey, when I was involved with the New Zealand system, Nicole was in our under-18 program, and uh, and it's great to see that the program worked, you know, that we've got these sorts of players that have come through the system, as we call it, and um, she made it all the way through to representing New Zealand at the Commonwealth Games and came home with a couple of bronze medals. So, um, yeah, fantastic uh, to see that uh, these up-and-comers um, you know, learn the trade and then get it all get all the way to the top of the game and 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 find themselves in the final of, of this champion champion singles event. I think to it um, again reinforces every bowler's opinion that while bowls is a sport which older people can play, um, the successful ones are of of this particular age at the moment and. When you look at that uh, New Zealand women's team, the average age is in the 20s of the, the representative team. So, uh, and Nicole Toomey is just a prime example of that. These two here, Briar Atkinson and Nicole Toomey, an indication that uh, bowls is certainly attracting a wide range of ages and particularly younger players. These are three good bowls coming How's in from Toomey. How's this for a start here, yeah, Nicole Toomey? Settling right into her work, and she'll have been watching, I reckon, because she's automatically straight away gone to that ditch side to the left, as we see it on screen, which seems to be the favoured hand here on the TV rank. And Briar following it down now in her forehand. Wow, <laughs> not bad. <laughs> yeah, very good, very good reply. Yes, yeah, she sprayed her first couple, well, dropped her first ball short, and her second ball hung out way wide on that backhand. So. It hasn't taken Briar long to realise it looks like the ditch hand is the more favoured side for me to be playing on. Switches to that hand and immediately draws second shot, or close to second shot anyhow. So, And uh, Nicole was quickly into her work. Not bad here either. A little touch of a jack would be brilliant. That's a lovely ball. What a oh, lovely oh, first gosh, Superb balls. Great start from Nicole Toomey. So we'll see what the marker indicates. Could be three. Oh, Morris Symes working the scoreboard, is he? No, no, he's gone to the other side. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if Morris might be a rink coach for for Briar. Yes, I, I, oh, yes. Uh, he he will be Briar's rink coach as she um, well definitely cuts it back to two I would say with that bowl she was in the area good yep. shot auction that she played there and um, yes I'm pretty sure that uh, yeah that, that Morris will be Briar's rink coach um, got a great record as a coach over the years Morris and with his years and years and years of experience uh, he will no doubt be a, a big asset to to Briar on the end of the rink as they measure for looks like measuring for the third shot here you missed a year's out there, Dave, with only three years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, years and years and years and years. Experience. I would have kept going, but uh, certainly one of the yeah. evergreen bowlers, isn't he, Morris Symes? Absolutely, and it was two, two to uh, Nicole to kick the game off.
thing with the coaches uh, or rink coaches, Dave, is that they're um, they're not there to offer; they're there to answer, aren't they? Really, it's the players have to yeah. go over and approach them. Is that the situation? Yep, yep. I think that that's the way that I used to like operating. Was that I wouldn't, unless I saw something hugely obviously. Um, huge, hugely obvious that, that a player needed perhaps to just be um, just draw their attention to something in particular but generally you wait for the player to come to you and normally when the player comes to you it's because they're a bit uncertain about um, what shot to play and so the way that I used to operate when a player came to me was just through questioning them just say okay what are you what are you looking at well I'm looking at you know option A and option B and what option looks to be the best to you on the mat from the mat end, well, option A looks a bit better, yeah. And what are the percentages of, of success with option A versus option B? And just ask them the questions and and help them to find the answer, and then and then just send them away with a heap of confidence to um, to play the shot that they've finally decided on. So Atkinson's first was very good, and it pushes uh, Nicole Toomey to that wider hand to her forehand. She's played it pretty well. Yeah, now sidled past, but it's in a handy place. I know, Alex, you uh, interviewed Briar um, not all that long ago, was it? Just about how she got into bowls, and it was through her grandfather, which was which was a nice story. And often we see with younger players that they get into the sport because of parents, or in her case, grandparents. And for her to stick with it shows that she obviously instantly enjoyed the sport. Yeah, one of those sports, I think, where you get your dynasties, really, don't you? You know, there's um, so many families that play. Nicole Toomey's part of a, a bowling family as well. And uh, when you talk to, to a lot of bowlers, and I suppose Joe's an exception, Dave, but a lot of bowlers, they get into it um, through their family and their parents or grandparents have played and their kids and siblings play. And so you have those wonderful sort of uh, family groups and gatherings. And it always gives you something to good, good to talk about at the dinner table as well. Yep, the old salt and pepper shakers get moved around explaining, you know, yeah. where I drew the shot, I had to come under the salt shaker, salt shaker here and beat the tomato sauce bottle to get second shot. You know, you're, That's exactly how it right, goes at so. my house, Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, for sure. And, and, That's a good it, shot it, from Brian. But... Yeah, carry on. Mate. I'm just, I'm just waffling. <laughs> it, is, it is amazing the number of times you hear people did did get into the sport through um, a parent or a grandparent, and and which is fantastic to hear. And uh, then then oh yeah, there are heaps of other ways to get into the sport. Of course, through secondary schools, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Twilight Business House Leagues is another a way that you quite often hear people have started the game, but it really is quite heartwarming to hear that people get into the game through their grandparents or their parents as we see a great bowl from Briar and she's going <laughs> to level things up here after the after the second end to all. I like the way she wasn't, uh, or three, in well, fact, fact, yeah. She got a three, yeah. Yep. yeah. So I like the way she wasn't afraid to play that hand because overweighted would have, put, you know, the danger was she'd drag the jack back to Toomey's bowl, but she played it with perfect weight. Two bowls, perfect weight, grabs a three. No, no signs of nerves at all, is there? No, there wasn't. Maybe the first couple of bowls from Briar, but after that, mm. what I was going to say too is there's there's good rhythm and momentum. We only played two ends, but they're, they're both reasonably quick players, and we've got a good flow to this game already as far as that's concerned. Um, both have got good pre-shot routines, and but they're quickly into their work, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, and uh, and so we've got a good a good rhythm to this game already. We had a, an outstanding example of being quick uh, on Friday, wasn't it, Alex, with um, Craig Tinker? And that uh, <laughs> quite often, yeah. quite often, uh, Morris Symes was watching his bowl finish, and he turned around and went to pick up his bowl, and he was almost immediately had to get onto the mat because Tinker was so quick. But as as Joe pointed out, he he did all his bowl pre-match routine off the mat. So he was doing it before he needed to be on the mat. And once he got onto the mat, there was no messing about. He was straight into it. 
a very impressive bowler, um, Craig Tinker, and particularly in that game it was a an exhibition really of, of how to play a singles match because Morris Symes played well, he played good bowls, uh, but from that halfway point on, never really looked like winning that game against Craig Tinker, who just, he, he didn't, he forgot how to miss really in that game and played yeah. uh, great bowls. Cole. And you've got to adjust her line here. She had good speed with her first bowl, but she's pulled up short this time. We talked in the previous match, the men's uh, quarterfinal match, about um, getting that centre line nailed. So getting the line taking part of the equation right. And Bryce definitely done it with that bowl, just a couple of inches off the centre line. But um, we need that. That's one thing that you need to do early in a game, when you or any game, but especially singles. Just make sure you've got your line sorted out, so you know exactly where the line is to get that ball coming back and finishing on the centre line. The bronze medalists in the women's will be Lindley O'Callaghan of Alexandra and Audrey Stevenson of Romati. So you see, a, look at those Beautiful balls there. Ball. Yeah. Perfect judgment to get underneath her own short bowl there and draw the shot. It was a great bowl. Willing this one to hold oh, it. Right right here, Briar. What a great shot. Oh, 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 <laughs> great <wow>. shot. <laughs> Perfectly weighted that bowl was. It was just the right amount of, of speed and uh, a tremendous result. Great, a great yep. shot. She's certainly got two. Yeah. Two and a measure. Here we are. Oh, grimace out of the hand there from Nicole Toomey. I think that... Mm. Probably isn't a good sign. Might get back no. for second shot. It's coming back. Or it might knock that up to run out the measure. Oh, no, she has too. She's been a bit lucky with that one. But still, it's uh, a couple of shots here to Briar Atkinson. Or oh, did she indicate three? Let's see. One. Two. Two it is. Two. So much like the, um, the men's match we saw previously um, numbers at the start so a two to Toomey on the first a three to Briar on the second and a, a two to Briar on the third so five to the score and it, we went through I think the first half dozen ends of that previous match between Gary Cotter and Kaylin Huella uh, before we got into singles uh, I think the first single was on the seventh end of that match so we'll see if this follows a similar pattern Sometimes can happen, John, while players are uh, just really nailing the rink and getting used to the both the lines and the speed of the rink. So, uh, but as they settle into their routines a bit more, I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing that it'll be there'll be one a lot more ones scored than than numbers. But yeah, this it is something quite common in a, in singles games that there can be uh, multiples dropped early in the piece. Brian make the adjust, adjustment of the speed here. No, she's pulled up a little bit short again. It'll probably be the shot, but... Very efficient delivery, Briar Atkinson. Doesn't look like there's any effort in it at all. And the bowl just uh, goes and goes and goes. I dare say uh, her bowl wouldn't make that little sound that we hear sometimes on these uh, carpet greens with the, the wooden underlay. Round that and she's in for shot. Yeah, very good shot there. Yeah, once again, eagle eye coach that I am, looking at these deliveries, both very, very efficient deliveries um, and some good 
lots of good things happening with the deliveries of both of these ladies. Ah, oh, lovely bowl. We talked about the not not bowling player watching or not watching uh, what happens. Um, and uh, the previous delivery, Bri Atkinson was looking way over the other side, counting the windows, Dave, <laughs> <laughs> in the building. And um, at this time, she wasn't really watching so much Nicole Toomey's bowl. She was sort of staring, gazing at the mat. Uh, so it's just that routine, nice routine she's got. I like this. And see who I, I'm not a coach, Dave, but I listen to you. The uh, way her hand follows through nicely, eh? fingers, palm right in your face. Inside yep, palm to the sky as we call good. it. Yep. Oh, oh, she's lovely. got a lucky result there. A little bit tight with her line, but she had good speed. And uh, yeah, just a little bit fortunate to get the perfect result that she got there, but she had good speed. Nicole on the forehand. to the wake now as we watch this she's ball break back in it's not far away she's close that's what a great there, shot it? oh yeah. that's very good not is sure whether she got the shot out of it but it was a tremendous bowl yep yeah, she did bowl. get the shot great bowl this is an interesting as we're talking about deliveries um dave something i've noticed with oh we just watch this replay first look at this it's perfection well this one isn't this is good weight <laughs> inside out for the for the shot and then nicole toomey drew around that bowl and look at this lovely almost you know an inch wider she could have made two out of that uh but on the subject of deliveries if we watch where nicole toomey stands on the mat it's always in the same corner Regardless of if she's on her forehand or her backhand, she stands in that sort of uh, back corner of the mat. Would there be logic, or what's the logic behind that, Dave? Well, I, what I, we, well, the textbook says that you stand in the middle of the mat at the front of the mat. But what I, what I like about what Nicole does, she does the same thing every time. And the, 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 the people that I struggle with somewhat are the ones who wander all over the mat. One minute they're in the middle of the mat, next minute they're out on one side of it or they're at the back of it. Do the same thing every time. And so that's what she does. So I've got no problems with that. But yeah, as I say, the textbook says centre of the mat at the front of the mat is uh, the ideal place to have your anchor foot. So she's a little bit unorthodox in that regard, but does the same thing every time. Well, look at this. Another great start. It's always that back right corner as we see it. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> to the vols. It is an unorthodox. Not many people I've seen that stay in that spot, um, but it works for her obviously. And so, and as I said, it's that same thing every time. But and not a bad result here either. Yeah, good no. What about moving your feet on the mat for various shots, for example, to get around or get under a, uh, a bowl in your line or what you perceive to be in your line? See, what, do you what do that, I, Dave? What I, in the, well, no, I don't. What I tend to say is that, geez, that make, just makes it so complicated, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, so, because some people say to get around a bowl, you've got to, move over to if you're playing your backhand normally you stand in the middle of the mat so to get around a bowl you've got to move to the left of the mat and you'll go around it but some people then work on the theory that to go around a bowl on the backhand you go on the right hand side of the mat and aim wider and so to me it's just complicating things what a great yeah. bowl yeah. here we have from nicole a good conversion there left a little bit of room but still she's got the shot and that's the important thing but yeah look so for me it just complicates things i just stay in the middle of the mat for every shot apart from drives sometimes i might use the mat a little bit for for driving uh, but oh. and i think you'll find um that most of the top players tend to just stay in the same spot the whole time uh, i know joe does i know val does um yeah f foot's always in the same same position 
Speaking of Val, she's up there in the back uh, watching. That's Val Smith. How's the wait here from Nicole Toomey? Oh, desperately wanted to be counting for second shot there. Beautiful line. She'll be disappointed with that. See how quickly Briar was onto her work there. That bowl of Nicole's had hardly stopped, and, and Briar was on the mat letting hers go straight away. Not bad. Let's see if she gets the right result. And she looks like she's going to. Yep. Yep. These bowls, they do just pull up a little bit on the screen. It's about, <coughs> excuse me, about 15, uh, 15 seconds on this carpet. Oh, no. She's so Nicole hung on to the shot there. Yep. Breathing a sigh of relief, you would think. Playing slightly shorter length ends, these the two girls. Um, this one's gone sort of to three quarter length, which is probably the longest length that they've played in this early stage of the game. Watch this bowl come back. It is a kind of hand on the side. You can sort of uh, be more loose with the green that you take and it tends to come back to that centre line. And Briar's on the forehand straight away. It's intriguing, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And, and it, you're right about, and, and funnily enough, mentioned in the previous game, that quite often ditch hands, ditch hands on, on any green, as we see a very good opener there from Great Briar. In, indoor or outdoor, ditch hands tend to be like that for some reason. They bring the bowl back to the centre of, uh, of the rink. Quite often you can choose two or three different lines down there and it'll same result. <laughs> uh, it's a peculiarity of, of ditch rinks sometimes that, that, that does sort of sweep gods. back off the bank. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, on the forehand. <laughs> Look at Briar. She was looking all over the place, wasn't she? Anywhere other than the rink itself. Probably... wide. Probably keeping an eye on her fellow Taranaki player that's in the semi finals of the men's singles, I dare say, keeping an eye on how he's going, I would imagine. Yeah. Well, I think on that note, um, Briar and uh, Kaylin, I'm pretty sure if they don't hold the absolute record, are two of the quickest ever uh, female and male players to win a gold star out of Taranaki. I think they both did it within two or three seasons. Uh, Kaylin, I think, was just <laughs> in one season. So. Uh, not bad, not bad. As we see Nicole, oh, she just looked down at it. She let go of that bowl. So, just... she had the right option there, looking with a bit of speed. She's got the back bowl there, just needed to be a bit tighter to either sit the shot bowl or, or grab the jack. So, See if she can make an adjustment with her last bowl. Well, that, that all depends on what Briar does with this one, of course. How's the weight? Pretty good. Look at that. What a shot. Great bowl. That's tidied it up nicely, too. Makes it very, very tricky for Nicole now. Yeah, good call here, Nicole. Come to have a look at the head. What would you do here, she Dave? Might, What's the, what are the options? Yeah, look, I think she might look at changing her hand and using her own wing bowl there now. She can she can either get onto the back of it and punch it into the head or just use the edge inside edge of it to get back to the uh, to the jack. So we, I would imagine because, we might... Yeah, it's on its running surface, isn't it, Dave? That, that, that yes. wing bowl that you were talking about. And because it's on its running surface and the bias is already on the right side... It just needs a tap, and it is going to roll into the head in the right direction. If it was sitting flat, you're asking a little bit more from your bowl. Yep, and that's she is definitely switching to that hand. Briar in the background there is just having a nice relaxing, which is good to see. It is good to see that, that you're not 
wound up about what your opponent's doing. It's um, good to see her in a relaxed state. Is this just a little Nicole? bit wide again? She's close, but just going to oh. not get enough of it. But good option to take there. Mighty effort, really. And Bro holding two. Bonus bowl time. Leading 5-4 in this race to 21. And I hear that um, Briar actually got four centre titles in her first year of bowls and then got the fifth one uh, the very next year. So <laughs> two seasons <laughs> to get us to centre gold star. That is just unbelievable stuff. You'd and think the game's four easy. Centre titles, <laughs> four centre titles in the first year that you play bowls. My word. Doesn't it make you sick? <laughs> it makes it? you sick. I don't like her at all. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? I love it. A couple on that end. Was it? 7 4. That's six yep. ends played. No short end again, as you mentioned, Dave. They seem to be preferring these, these shorter lengths for whatever reason. Cole on the forehand as well. She's got a bit of an opening here. Some space. And she's taken the right line. It's down to the weight now. Look at this. It's a great first bowl there from Nicole Toomey. And sit down. Yeah, good shot. Right, straight onto the backhand side. Seems to be quite an instinctive player, Briar Atkinson. She does. She doesn't take long, does she? Although she is, as we've said earlier, uh, going through that same routine. She's got a perfect routine, one that suits her. And I Let's think watch her in the background the, now as uh, Toomey lines up her shot. And Atkinson just checking, as you said, Dave, about how her teammate's getting on. Power 2 2 teammate. And. Uh, now she's she's almost on the mat, ready to go, isn't she? She yeah, sees that's... Toomey put down another great shot. Sure. Very good bowl from Nicole there. For Briar, it's almost as if she just plays the bowl in front of her eh? There's not a, uh, a huge yeah. amount of, of thinking time. There's a shot to play, and it is played, which we see a lot with the junior bowlers as well. And if they've got the talent to back it up, why not? Yeah. That's yep. really a really good result. Absolutely. I mean, I think pre-shot routines vary from player to player and some are quite methodical and take more time and and that suits them. But um, if, if, if you've got the shot in your mind, you can visualise it, get on the sh just get on the mat and let it go. You know, that's that's the key thing. And I think that's what Briar obviously does and works for her. Got no problem with that. And then you've got other people who do like to be a bit more methodical, take a little bit more time, and once again, nothing wrong with that. Works for them. It's it's the crucial thing. You just got to make sure you do same thing every time. Is the is the key to it. That's for sure. She just Come needs uh, a little bit of weight here, doesn't she? Just more than what she's had so far. Although Square. she promoted her own bowl. What a oh, shot! Well, there you what go. Goal. She does promote her own bowl. <laughs> Great option of a shot there because she did have that option to punch her own bowl out or if she was just a bowl higher, she'd have just missed her own bowl and sat on the shot bowl. So it was a very good shot option that she took and she played it with the perfect weight and got the dream result, got the great result. So here's a question, Dave. If you're Nicole Toomey here, is she looking to draw the shot or do you try and suck the jack back around the corner for a multiple? What's the weight selection? We'll find out That's soon, I suppose. Answer, <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Couldn't quite see the head. Here we go. So Nicole, couple of technical the glitches, the but yes, I think she definitely needed to be a. She needed to be arriving. Absolutely, she had the good speed, 
So she could have sat on the shot bowl or definitely dragged that jack. So she, she once again, Nicole had the right shot option, just a bit wide. It can be a little bit frustrating, can't it? If, you, if we look at that head, and Nicole uh, played four bowls that were right in the area, really. Three three good ones, and the fourth bowl just a, a bowl wide. She's dropped a point because Briar played three bowls that were short and one brilliant fourth bowl. And you feel like you're playing at a high percentage of effectiveness, and you're trailing eight four in a in a game that has to be managed too, doesn't it? It does, and the key thing there is one one word, and that is patience. You you just can't let that sort of get at you, and it's just a matter of patience and keep doing what you're doing and keep playing those effective bowls, and um, hopefully your a your effectiveness gets even better, and b just occasionally the opposition will miss one, and that's when you can pounce and score. So it's patience in situations like that. I think too well, it's frowned upon if you're bowling short. Uh, those three bowls of Briars in that last end was, were short enough to still come into play, weren't they? And that's what happened. So it didn't need to be, it just needed to be an overweighted draw, really, to turn one of them over into the shot as it was. That's a very yeah, they weren't horrendously short. No. Mm. They weren't horrendously short. They were hitterupperers, as we call yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. Is that the technical term? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put that in the coaching book somewhere. See I think it'll, again. it'll sit in there alongside Dumpy, Alex. <laughs> I, thought we'd, I thought we'd moved on from that, John. Oh, that's right, we had, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Along with the chicken comment. <laughs> As we see, Nicole yeah, on moved the on from end. that. Yeah, thank goodness. Two good first bowls again. So she's doing everything right here, Dave, and, is, and, and as she did on the last end, this is a, a much tighter situation for her, though, so you can't imagine it Atkinson will get the same sort of play by promoting anything. No, she's... Um, oh, no, that's... <laughs> Nicole's just putting the pressure on with those first two bowls in, on this particular end, and she did the last end as well. Now, I think Brian might have had the right idea there. She needed to be arriving, though. She didn't want to be dropping short, but she did play it a little bit tighter to arrive and sit on the shot bowl. Uh, so... This is where, as I said, Nicole, a little bit of patience here. Beautiful. And this bowl is going to be, that's another counter, and it's also a bit of a blocker from the shot that I was talking about. But Briar's quickly into yeah. her work. She'll be looking just to get maybe third shot here, second, third shot. Um, limit the damage, oh. and she's dropped another one short. Oh, it's so frustrating. So this is a, a, four bowls. And this is just, this is the prime example of what I was talking about the last time, where, John, you asked me about Nicole playing effective bowls but still not scoring, and she's shown the patience here. She's dropped, four, dropped three in there. Briar's missed on this occasion, and the patience is paying off, and she's going to score a four, you know, so. Four really good bowls there from oh, Nicole. Yeah. The first four of the game... And it's an effective one for Toomey because she was 8-4 down and now she is 8-all and has the mat. How badly does she want her first bowl to be a toucher here? We've got a four to get back Absolutely. right into contention. First bowl. Absolutely. Really put more pressure on Briar again. Um, it looks to me like, though, Briar's not... It looks to me like she's got a good... Uh, decorum about her and that and, and the, it doesn't look like things bother her too much. She's staying relatively calm and so it'll be interesting to see how she responds now though, having dropped that four. And a long end, Dave. So maybe Nicole's thinking, oh, there's been some short bowls coming up the rink from Briar. We'll chuck it long and see if that continues. Good point. Good point. Oh, look at this. Yeah, that's a pretty good start, huh? See, Half Briar's got sure. the uh, Paratutu shirt on display now. Mm. 
Yeah, another short bowl. This is not not good from Briar. The last five bowls she's delivered have all finished short. Is this a time where if you're if you're Morris Syme sitting there as the rank coach, and this end plays out with Briar still not sort of reaching as well as she could, the rank coach might just go, oh, you know, a little tap on the shoulder, or do you wait to be invited in? This is probably one of those instances, depending on how the remaining three bowls go on this end, where I, I you might intervene. Yeah, you might just go in and, you know, just just a little comment about let's see if we can get our first bowl a couple of feet past on this end, eh? Just you know, just to. Um, but if if she makes the adjustment herself, then you don't need to. But yeah, if the two eight bowls in a row finishing short would definitely be a time for a coach to intervene. But. Yeah. She's made the adjustment nicely there. And what do you say anyway, Dave? Because the player herself knows what she needs to do, and that is to, <laughs> to add a metre or whatever it is of weight. Um, is it just a matter of asking them, just refocus, go back to what you know best? Or I, I don't really know. So. Yep, look, one of the things... One of the things that I used to try and do was relax the player as well. So maybe sometimes you just make a joke, you know, just just pass a bit of a funny comment about something to do. And, and you know, um, it might be something, are you getting a bit weary out there or something, dropping them short? You know, just a, yeah. an off-the-cuff comment like that can quite often just relax the player, yeah. but at the same time make them aware of what you're getting at, you know, so... To me from the Stokes Valley Club. Inside out here. That's a lovely bowl. What a lovely shot. Very very good shot. Good shot option again. Had her own bowl to promote. Underneath it she was going to sit the shot bowl and she did that beautifully. So well played. Similar track here from Briar. Not far away. She's in the area she's again too. Away. Yes, I think she's. That's beautiful. She's got it. What a great ball! What a great ball! Can see why these two have made it through to the stage. See so if she goes short. It is interesting with these yellow jacks, isn't it? Because they are heavier. And I think we were talking, it might have even been on the first day of the broadcast, John, with Joe. Yes. And uh, she made the point that you can often feel the weight with a normal jack on an outdoor green. And that's what we say, like if you if you throw the jack, you know the weight of the um, for your first bowl. But with these heavier jacks, they go further than you expect. And then sometimes you go, well, what weight? <laughs> what weight's it going to come out of my hand there for the, for the first bowl? So her weight problem wasn't permanent. She's just delivered that one nicely, her first one. Just slightly jack low, and Toomey looking to find the gap in between the jack and that shot. Probably has the shot there with that first of hers. Right on the back end. Oh, just yeah. a foot or two again. So while we're watching this very closely, was also a lovely second Ooh. shot too from Toomey. One of so those tinker bad bowls, though, I think. Yeah, yeah, a bit wide now. Tinker and Grantham, Glasson, and uh, playing against Tahuella. And the. Oh, here we go. A bit of weight might get a result out of this. Oh, oh she oh, does. No. Bit of luck. Oh, she got... 
so. got the dream result there. I mean, it was yeah. it was the right option definitely to be up and into the head, but boy, oh boy, did she get a dream result. Yeah, but she had the right bias and good weight. <laughs> and then you just take the result sometimes. It's all part of the game. Two men now looking to nudge that shot bowl and spring the jack across to herself would have been nice. Or sit there for a couple. It's a difficult shot for her though. And what will Briar play with this? Same hand. Well, look at that trick out. That's probably the widest green we've seen played on that ditch hand side. Uh, it's coming back at the end now, but it did go for a little bit of a walk. That's a perfect home, though, for that bowl because yes, it just isn't covers, it? covers the uh, the jack being spat out. And that's what Nicole will be looking to do. She'll be looking to play with similar weight to what she just played, but tighten the line up to get onto her own short bowl or just missing her own short bowl and getting the shot bowl. But she's a bit wide again, I think, here. Yep, unfortunately. Very tight game this oh, between Nicole Turmey and uh, Briar Atkinson. It's 10-8 uh, to the young woman from Paratutu Bowling Club. See the crowd in the background watching on. Looks more of a crowd on this shot though, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have got a number, a huge amount tuning in as well live to the coverage. So thank you oh, good. to those who are tuning in. And I know that they also put it up on a lot of the big screens around the club. So hello to everybody who doesn't have us on mute. So we see this bowl here of Briar Atkinson. Still a little bit short. Alex, Alex said they'd have some on mute. <laughs> oh, I know, I know some do. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I wouldn't want to listen to me talk. <laughs> Waiting for this to come back now from Nicole Toomey. Opportunity here for Briar to put more pressure on Nicole by drawing a real handy one. Just going to sidle past a little bit. Still counting though. We'll have the men's final following this. Lots of options here if she's in the in the zone. She might just fall a bit short with this. So to close it out here, get one really close, maybe tuck it in. Yes. She'd love a, a, a little toucher here. Drawing it dead cold would really put the acid on Nicole. Still leaving just a little bit of room. However, she is holding three. The weight. Oh, it's going to begin in the context of the game. Oh, she. She was unlucky and lucky at the same time. There, she. Yeah. Uh, if she hadn't. Have, Landed the bowl, she'd have gone sailing well past, but she may have got second or third shot out of that. Oh, and it always, yeah, it always looked narrow, didn't it? Yep. So, so here we go. may well just be one at the moment to Bryant. Feels important though, doesn't it, this bowl? Nicole yeah. trailing by two. It feels like if she misses this, I could open up a, bit, a little bit of a lead here, a bit of momentum. 
Whereas if she gets it, she's still saying, look, I'm here to stay and I will be doing my very best to win this match. Oh, good bowl. Turn right. off her own bowl here. Yeah, 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 she's yeah. done it. Great bowl. Well done. Uh, someone with a lot of composure. And plenty to rest on there, wasn't there? Any, sitting on any of those uh, would have given it a shot and she she did that perfectly. And I think she was let off a wee bit. Bryant Atkinson will be disappointed with her fourth bowl, although she doesn't appear to be worried about it, does she? But um, outwardly, she's nice and calm. Yep, that's good to see. Nothing seems to phase her, which is um, which is good. But, you know, the mental side of the game is such a big part of it. You know, um, the number of player, the number of people I've spoken to who have played top level sport in an, another sport and come to bowls and say that. Bowls is probably the most mentally challenging sport that they've played, and I've talked talking about guys who have played, you know, first class cricket. Well, even even brother Jock, my my brother Jock Edwards, when he he played cricket for New Zealand, and he took up bowls, and he said that after a few years of playing bowls, he said I've I've never played a sport that is mentally challenging as what bowls is, and so it's a huge part of the game, and it's great to see that. As I've said, that Briar looks to be just completely calm and relaxed, and mentally nothing seems to be annoying her. You know, outwardly, who knows inwardly what's going on, but it definitely looks like she's just super relaxed. Oh, well, I think your um, task next, Alex, is to find out whether she chews the same gum as Tinker. I was going to ask you that earlier on, uh, John, but then I decided against it. So I'm glad you've brought it up. As we see, yeah. a great bowl here from Nicole Toomey. I do. I meant to go and have a look to see if they still sold Juicy Fruit, as we spoke about <laughs> yesterday or the day before. I haven't checked yet. Ah, uh, well. I gave you one thing to do. <laughs> Just one thing. <laughs> uh, a thousand apologies, John. I turned it back on that one pretty quickly. Chance for Nicole to consolidate the end. Beautiful out of her hand, that one. A square follow through. And let's see where this ball ends up. It drifts a little bit on yeah. this hand. But plenty of room to come in here. Nice. Another counter. As a commentator, the um, the players that have absolutely no body language are really challenging because I can never tell when they let it go if their bowl is good or not. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, look, they look exactly the same both times. Cole. Oh, she's on the tighter line, isn't she? Mm. Oh, yeah. There was a bit of body language so, there, <laughs> only just with the arm, sort of indicating I needed to be wider with that weight. She had lovely weight, and it was. Um, Ooh, uh, Briar's is playing with a, a little bit of a niggly line here, looking she's to sit it. the shot she's bowl. She's low, she's got it, but oh, she oh, ran well. through herself though, so. Possibly no change to the score. It looks like it should still be two to Nicole. It's funny when that happens in a game sometimes. It, like it is just the bowling god, say. Eh? You know, we saw Briar play a bowl earlier on in the in the match, which was narrow and got a very good result. And then she played a good bowl then. It was almost perfect and got a very bad result. So it does usually sort of, it works itself out. And as a player, you just go, oh, well, <laughs> swings and roundabouts. So it's a score which indicates uh, these two deserve to be through here to the final as 11-10, and they've had some terrific wins on their way through here. They started off as a couple of the favourites, and other favourites fell by the wayside, but these two have stayed in contention, and now they're 
developing this match into a real classic at 11-10 to Nicole Toomey, who's delivered her first bowl. That's what we expected, isn't it, John? Because if we think about the semi-finals, Briar Atkinson uh, defeated Lenny O'Callaghan from the Alexandra Bowling Club, 21 points to 7 in her semi. And Nicole defeated yep. Audrey Stevenson, 21 points to 9. So they were in similar form in the semi-finals against two very good bowlers. Uh, so unsurprising to see this final now, 11-10 uh, to Nicole Toomey, and essentially all locked up. Just one of the things we talked about, Brian, you know, dropping a few short earlier on, she seems to have pretty much fixed that now, but she's missing her line, which is a concern now. She a little bit narrow with that first bowl, see if she can make the adjustment with this one. She, you know, I, as we talked in the previous game, the men's game, you know, the game's simple, line and length. You seem to bowl down the correct line at the correct speed, and she's made a <clears throat> good adjustment with her line here, although still just a fraction tight, and the easiest part of the two to get is definitely the line, and, and Briar's just sort of been fishing around a little bit with her line here, and I think it's something she possibly needs to really focus on. Right, let's let's just nail this line. Let's get the bowl finishing on the centre line, and then the speed will come. So she's just started to wander around a little bit with her line, which does concern me as a coach, whereas Nicole just um, is murdering that centre line, as you can see there. Oh, she's got plenty to use here, hasn't she? You know, sitting the this shot. This is a better bowl. This is a better bowl. Oh, how oh, was oh she's there. unlucky. Nicole staying on the forehand. Is it going to finish this bowl? <laughs> it's in a nuisance spot, isn't it, for the <laughs> yeah. Bryant? But she'll still play that same hand, hoping to connect with something down there. Connecting with anything here would be to her advantage. Not far away. Something square would be ideal for Briar Atkinson, and she's done it. What a shot. Oh, oh my gosh. She played a, played a bomb bowl there. She needed that. Four <laughs> down. <laughs> What a big conversion shot that was, and it was a crucial one. Difference between between being 11 all and 15 10 down was that bowl, and that's uh, so very important bowl. Absolutely. Also, can report uh, just the the men's semi finals that are going on to the left as you see them. Uh, in one semi final, Tony Grantham leads Craig Tinker 12 points to 10, and then Paratutu's Kalen. Eight points and Nathan Glasson five in the other semi final. So two close semi finals going on there. What's this points business, Alex? The uh, shots. Po oh, I don't know what I could blame. <laughs> Shall I blame my indoor background or my confusion? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe not enough coffee. <laughs> Just blame the fact that you are confused anyway. So <laughs> yeah, okay, that works. That works. Oh, what a I'll try to fix it next time, yeah. Dave, but no, no, no promises. They're uh, interesting to note here that um, Briar's stretched the length out. Well, this is the first really, really long end we've had, so this will be an interesting end to see how both players respond to that. And I wonder if it's a a purpose on purpose ploy. Doesn't think to ring for Nicole. Nicole. Oh, great <laughs> no, it isn't. What a great point. Not only she did I say points, points instead of shots, which was wrong, I also said that Kalen was from Patatutu, which is half right, but he's representing Jury Hill at this event. Uh, so that was a really bad bit of commentary for me because I got confused about what points are. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to say someone's last name and then said the wrong club. You're forgiven. Thank you. <laughs> Cole on the forehand. Definitely a tighter line here. Yeah. And they have good speed Just though, which which means <laughs> she, 
she gets away with it by having pretty good speed. Yep. This is also a tighter line, but she's playing with speed on purpose. She's got Goodness heaps of weight on here. Me. And, oh, well, another lucky result. Another outstanding uh, lucky result for her. So the to benefit of having a goal the past shot. the head, I suppose. Nicole on the back end, so we think it, uh, the, the stitch hand it should come off the the ditch side back to the centre line, but the weight might not be quite right here. Just past. I think she she might have been just playing to sit that uh, shot bowl of of Briar Atkinson's to and uh, was just a, a bowl too high. This one looks to be on a good track for Briar. Quite got the legs. Back end. Same Once shot again, again. trying to sit on the shot. Oh, yeah, just a bowl high again, or a couple of bowls high. So one more to Atkinson, takes her to a 12-11 lead. So we can see now, if you look at Briar Atkinson's shots that she scored, her, her last five scoring shots, have all been, or scoring ends, have all been singles. And uh, so the game really tightening up now. She's had a bit of luck on a couple of occasions to get a couple of those ones, but definitely been in the air. And she's persevered with this longer length again as well, mm -hmm. so she must feel comfortable with it. And she's played a reasonable opener. She's gone through 18 inches or so. So Yes, if we go back through this, it was eight all after eight ends, and then it was... 9-8 to Atkinson, 10-8, then 10-9, 10-11 in favour of Nicole, 11 all, now 12-11. So really very, very tight match. Good bowl from Nicole there. They've both nailed their lines with their first, first bowls here. Another very, very good bowl here from Briar Atkinson. Yeah, Have a look we'll at this. Oh. When's it coming back? A bowl of Nicole Toomey's. Another good shot. Quickly into her work is Briar. <laughs> Isn't she? Isn't she? It's amazing, really. It's but yeah. um, it works for good her. Good line too. Yeah, good line. Look she at this. played a great what bowl a here. What, what a, a bowl! Yeah. Very good bowl. It's instinctive, really. So the bronze medalists have already been determined. Yeah, Audrey Stevenson and Lindley O'Callaghan. I see Audrey Stevenson up at the top centre of your screen, staying on, no doubt, for the presentation. But this this is a tight head. Those are th some classic bowls that have gone down, aren't they? And this isn't Here's far away one, either John. from... Yep. Talk about classic bowls. Oh, it's Oof. just a gallop short. I thought that was a front toucher all the way. Well, I think Nicole might have thought that too because it looked absolutely perfect until it wasn't. One to Bryant. Hmm. Looked like it might have been two from our angle, but Mark is a lot closer, let's say. Here she is. Doesn't want She's to nudge tight. that red up. 
Yeah, yeah. Might just get away with it. Beautiful speed again. Wasted the good speed by not having the right grass. Yeah, talk about how quickly she plays and as I, as I said earlier, it's all about how you feel, how comfortable you feel playing. But, you know, some of the top, a couple of the top players who play super quick come to mind. You know, Aaron Sheriff from Australia. He's a, he's a super quick player. Aaron Wilson uh, oh. from Australia also. <laughs> Very super quick player. As we see Nicole here, this is a great bowl here. She's going to get down, needs to sit a down. What a shot. shot. I'd, I'd say that. It's very close now. No one's clapping. <laughs> God, it looked like a good bowl, didn't it? Let's see what happens. Oh, it's don't. Briar hung on to it. Wow. So she gets a third single in a row. And Briar Atkinson from Paratutu is playing Nicole Termi of Stokes Valley. So it's Taranaki against Wellington. Two real strong centres in New Zealand bowls. And Briar leading by 13 to 11. Tidy oh. open up. Cole switching immediately to that forehand side, so it must look like the backhand's blocked from the player's end. Yeah, there's a bit of body language for you, Alex. Yeah, thank you. I would say that that's not going yeah. to get to the uh, the place place that you yep, wanted it to get to. That's right. Asking the players help us out with that. I would also challenge Nicole a little bit on changing her hand there. The, the bowl of, of Briars, whilst it might have been, an, you know, you've only got to be either side of it, and you know that hand, it's already the shot. I would have stayed on that backhand, um, and, you know, if, if that's the hand that I'd been playing. Now, she has to play the forehand because her own bowl, as well as Briars, is sort of mucking things up. But when someone sticks a bowl that handy, it's the first bowl of the end, I, I, it wouldn't force me to change my hand, that's for sure. Here we go, a correction required from Nicole Toomey. And we know it drifts a little bit here, this hand. It can drift a little bit, willing it to drift here. You see it just hold that smidgen at the end of the track and an OK second shot. Straight into her work, Briar Atkinson. It's going to dip to... Sort of a round... The straighteners. They've both been a bit reluctant to take their green on this forehand coming this way. I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure why, but they've both been cutting their green. It may be. I know there are some other ranks on this uh, carpet, Dave, where you take a little bit more and you get punished every now and then. It can sort of give you a little bit of uh, anxiety about, <laughs> about chucking your bowl out there yep. just in case it happens. But sometimes you don't even realise that's what's going on. That's a good bowl. Yeah, good ball. One to Briar, says the marker. Oh, we've had some interaction with the coach. Briar just checking with Morris that on the back end, covering the back is the right call. I, I think that's the first time we've seen her talk to Morris. Oh, was she yeah, saying for as close as possible? <laughs> Yeah, no, she's, um, I wonder if she was looking to be narrow and take that uh, second shot out, I don't know. At any rate, it turns out all right for us, don't you? It's one of those situations where I think I would have still played on the forehand and done what you said, yeah. John, try to reach Nicole's bowl and made two of it because that would have changed the head, and but whereas at the moment things are set up pretty well for oh, Nicole here, gracious. although she's been desperately unlucky. The rub of the green definitely is going Briar's way at the moment. That's going to be two there. Well, the good thing about this is the final has no time limit on it, so from Nicole's point of view, every other game she will have played this weekend has a two-hour time limit, barring the semi, of course, and... Uh, when you get sort of 15-11 down, 
a time pressure arrives as well because you actually might run out of time before you catch up. But in this final, it's simply raced to 21 points and you haven't won until you've won. So Nicole, it's not panic stations yet, but uh, I'm sure she wouldn't mind scoring a couple of ends in a row. Now you mentioned coming this way last time, Dave, that she just had lost her green a wee bit. We'll see if she regathers that. Oh, she's missed the centre line by, oh gosh. Narrow. Yeah. Millimetres. <laughs> we'll, give her, we'll give her that one. Yeah. Narrow yeah. and heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Nicole willing this bowl back. Heavy and wide. <laughs> <laughs> we could go on. <laughs> yeah, two nice balls starting, one. starting off there. So both players using that forehand side for this particular end. Weight correction here from Toomey looks okay. Very good, good bowl job. here. Yep. It's the first bowl that she's uh, mm. missed a line on this hand a, a little bit. She once again pretty good speed. Well, the correct correct line she'd have been shot there. Subtle difference in the deliveries of the two girls. Um, Nicole with the nice nice uh, arm swing. Whereas if you look at Briar, tends to be a little bit of a, a push bowler, so not much of a backswing, just just tends to push the bowl. Um, just, mm. just the minutest of backswings, whereas Nicole is quite a flowing backswing. They're both effective. Like Absolutely. This and this, like this one here. What a great look bowl. That. What a great what a bowl. If it sits down, it's even better. If it stays standing up, Nicole's got a slightly easier shot to play on the forehand. Yep. It's almost where you want to just play the ball as quickly as possible, just in case it sits down. <laughs> She'd definitely be looking to arrive to that bowl, just with a couple of feet of weight. Try and land on that shot bowl and stay there and make a couple of it. Oops, going down to have a look. I reckon it sat down. I reckon that's what's happened. Look at that. Oh, it has it too. It has. <laughs> and, yep. I, and I thought it might have moved the jack if it sat down, but I, which would have gone back towards Nicole's red bowl. But no, I don't think it touched it, did it? It's just sat down. Yep. And it has made it a lot harder shot now for Nicole. So yeah, particularly things. when Briar has those three bowls to the right as we view them, if the jack does yep. sort of squirt, if she plays with, um, you know, just a slight bit of weight. Deep breath on yep, the mat. You're right. On the forehand, essentially just the dead draw, really. Let it go very smooth. Let's see what happens here. She'll be focusing on getting that arc back to the centre line. She's waving for it to turn. I think she realised mm. she'd put it out just a little bit wide. That was beautiful speed for it, but just a little bit wide. So another one to Briar. And when you look at those bowls there, that's uh, pretty impressive stuff for, with regard to weight and line. So these two, and um, as Mark Noble would say, well, this is a national championship final. You expect them to be like that. Doesn't always happen. These are some of our outstanding younger players on the national scene. 
Briar Atkinson now leading by 16 to 11. And quite significantly, she scored on the last five ends. Mm. So uh, that'll just be starting to needle away at Nicole a little bit. In fact, she scored on 11, 12, um, all oh, but look at this. I mean, Nicole. Great That's opener. Right. Immediately, Nicole's under pressure. Yep. The body language is going to be really interesting to watch as the game progresses. She gets closer prior to that 21. It's a national final she's playing in here. Just saying, looking at the scoring, uh, David, uh, David's uh, 11 out of 17 ends Briar has scored. So for Nicole, even though she's been right in there and holding shots and playing some superb bowls, she's only managed to score in six of the 17 ends. Yep, quite significant stat, that. Good line again. Just, Just going to die a bit, bit short. <clears throat> Probably a, a reasonable sort of a guide for Nicole to, to truck underneath that and try and land on the shot bowl. She's got a good second. So if she just plays with a riving weight underneath that short one of, of Briars and looks to sit the shot bowl. And she's in the area here. She's in the area. Oh, just didn't have this all for another six six inches or a foot of weight. She'd have had a screamer. A nod from the coach who says, yep, change your hand. Mm -hmm. So any yeah, contact really with like that it. red, oh no. Reluctantly oh, feather on the inside. <laughs> yeah. uh, all sorts of results can come out of playing that hand here, aren't they? For, for Briar Atkinson. She's holding shot. Toomey was a fraction away from making that the perfect bowl last time. Good line again. Or is it going to be... Needs any fort, any, anything, ah. anything but the gap clean. Uh, the weight she's played is lovely because it stayed on the rink. Yep, she's had a good sighter of it now. So if if, <clears throat> if Briar doesn't change anything here, then Nicole's had the sighter. Big Once moment. again, she's undergreened this ball. Yes, but... <laughs> it might Has that given it Nicole might... a better line? Yep. She might play with Target. even more weight here because she's got yeah. two good seconds. She's got the back pole. She might play with even more weight than what she played last time. Huge moment. Huge chance for Nicole Toomey. She's oh. narrow. She oh, she's tight. Yep. She did play with a lot more weight but didn't have the accuracy. So another chance there for Nicole to convert things has gone. Gone. And now you're in the situation where... So we're just getting uh, a result. We've got a finalist in the men's, Tony Grantham, defeating Craig Tinker, 21-13. The other game on going, 11-7 uh, to the man from Dury Hill uh, over Nathan Glasson. It was <coughs> encouraging too to see there. I don't know whether you guys watched it, but uh, Morris Symes and Brian Atkinson were just having a laugh together. She was a bit disappointed with her last bowl and had her head in her hands but was laughing and he was grinning back to her so you know good rapport between advisor and and player oh once once again a, oh what a great opener once again a bit of laughter just relaxes things just takes yep. attention out of the situation so yep So this is the women's final of the Somerset Singles Champion of Champions being played in Hastings. Again on Friday at 8 o'clock in the morning.
the women copped the early start of eight o'clock. Lovely bowl here from Toomey, who's now in the position where she really has to prevent Atkinson from scoring. Atkinson potentially could go out on this, but Toomey's made it very difficult for her to get four around that. However, this is not a bad line coming in from Atkinson if it waits there. Yes, we'll um, Briar Atkinson. Briar Atkinson on the springboard, as we say, on the diving board. You know, within four of that elusive number twenty-one, and so she's now a chance to go out on any end from here on in. I think a little tap on the bowl there will just be nice from Nicole. Very, very good bowl. Chance though here for Bry to arrive to that bowl. Yes, yeah, sit that out and suddenly you're gone from one down to three up. Three up. It can change yep. very quickly, yep. Not and a mile away close. either. She's, she's close. close. Yeah. Perla. Oh, what a oh. shot. Oh, wow. See how far that jack sprung she's out, those heavy jacks. She was a bit unlucky that she got the jack, you know. If she'd got the bowl yeah. square and stayed there, it would have been three. But, yeah, she's um, she's now given Nicole a bit of two chances to draw the shot, um, whereas Briar, she's only got the one bullet left. So you'd like to think with two bowls that Nicole is probably going to draw the shot here. Well, she's not going to with this one, that's for sure. But She's got a second one, and she's cut it down. I know, I mean, I know those bowls are a long far away, but it's... Uh... At least you've got the comfort of knowing you're going to be two down instead of the three or the four when it comes to your last bowl, if you are Nicole Toomey. Maybe not even that. We've seen Green taken here, and this bowl is going for a serious walk. It might have come back in bounds, uh, but certainly not close, and a chance for Nicole Toomey. She would expect to draw the shot here, nine times out of ten. Cut it back to 17-12. This bowl from Nicole Toomey. Nine times out of ten, but maybe. <clears throat> yep. No, yes. she's, she's Nine times up. out of ten. There you go. Yep. Good so she's on the board again. That was uh, one, two, three, four, six ends without scoring. It's now 17-12. What do we see here, guys? Is there going to be a change in mat length or jack length, or does she stay the same? What's, what's the game plan? Well, I don't think she should play the length that uh, Briar's been playing, that's for sure. I think you'll find her throw it a little bit shorter. Um, I'll probably be proven 100% wrong here, but <laughs> she just needs to break it up a little bit because Briar, you know, as we've mentioned, has scored on... Oh, she's still throwing a long one. Okay, all right. Maybe not a silly idea if that's how she... if she feels comfortable with that length. That's the important thing. Yeah. As mentioned earlier, sometimes you go searching for a different length and you end up mucking yourself up rather than the opposition. So she feels comfortable on this length, then fine, stick with it. It's about this first bowl now, isn't it? You want to continue that momentum. She's scored a one. She's thinking, look, I want to score another end. Just chip away and chip away and look at this for a first bowl. And That's the experience of Nicole Turney. What a reply. Uh, what a oh, reply. Oh, gosh. That's great That's to watch. Stuff. Body language still. Like, as a coach, David, look at the hand on the follow through from Toomey. So sort of right up in front of her face, isn't it? And then compare it to what you see from Briar. And there's not much of a difference, I don't think. And they're both getting look at this. absolutely perfect results. Look at this. Oh, great, great stuff. Bowl. What an end. Tremendous head building up here, guys, that's for sure. Yes, you're right, yeah. John. Um, yeah. See so Briar there, that, you can see. Flick of the wrist. Just like to see the, the palm to the sky, the palm yeah, definitely yeah. facing straight up to the sky. There was a little bit of a flick of the wrist, as you mentioned there, which is not ideal, but still okay. And I wonder whether, when you, you talked about her playing on a forehand, whether that flick of the wrist does 
tend to have the potential to sort of narrow the bowl a wee bit. And when she was missing absolutely. the green, whether that was, yeah. Could very well be the reason, John. You're absolutely right. It's um, definitely try and keep that palm open, palm to the sky, as we say. And um, not a bad Good. option not from a bad Nicole piece. there. Just, yep. yep, round the back. You often see those shorter deliveries on uh, uh, centres or regions of clubs that have got quicker greens, don't we? Because, you know... Oh, 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 Alex, believe... watch this one. Alex, oh. watch this one. Oh, 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 oh. oh that was unlucky. a good goal. I thought, you... stiff. <laughs> oh, I thought Goodness. she was going to get a three out of this. Maybe a quarter of a bowl Very good. from perfection. Very good third bowl from Nicole going round the back there, and that ended up being the shot. Heard that one bounce. Yeah, and she grimaced. Could right off the, the ditch side though, in for second. Oh, just not coming out as well Hang as you like them. Briar on the forehand here, this is interesting. Unusual. I don't know why she would be playing the forehand here. Just hoping to promote one of her own, which is a bit of a fifty fifty sh shot, really. <laughs> oh, just about. You okay, yeah, John? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I am. Okay. I mean, I was looking at and the options there, and I thought maybe she thought that's a better option. Well, she did, obviously. Thinks that's a better option. I can promote my own rather than playing the other hand and possibly promote Nicole. And it almost worked for her. She's had a, a couple of good slides today. 17 yeah. 13. That instinctive game, isn't it? You know, you see a shot and you play the shot uh, sort of oh. style. Nicole Toomey now two ends in a row. Remember she dropped, was it five in a row we decided? Yep. She's now, to get her now she's and persevered with a slightly longer length again. On the forehand. Very, very good opener again. Very good opener. Great bowl. So now there's a little bit of pressure being exerted on Briar with these first bowls from Nicole. It's a much narrower here green once she's taking. Yep. She's missed her line, John, and this could be very much what Coach John Macbeth has spotted <laughs> with that hand. <laughs> That hand turning over, as you know, she's she she does tend to miss her line on the forehand. Much more uh, comfortable and much more effective on her backhand draw, but definitely the forehand's the one that's been causing her most issues when it comes to line taking. Look at that! Pretty and there's the more too. pressure. There's more pressure. I think. Drawing on all of her experience, Nicole. She's been playing competitive bowls for a long, long time. Good option from Bry to change her hand here. And look at this. Look at this. What Great a bowl. <laughs> so surely Nicole's got to change hands here. Beautiful shot. Look at that. Three Playing bowls with within here. foot. Playing with a little bit of weight to try and sit the shot bowl through. She can get a result off of her own short one here like that. Oh, Just didn't effort. quite have enough weight to do it. But a very good effort. And she's made it a little, little bit better for herself too now. Just with that bowl being more exposed. Brian Not when Briar sits in between the two. <laughs> there she goes. She has. <laughs> yep. Great. I think Nicole just said to the marker, what do I do here? <laughs> two down she is. <laughs> yep. Most of the time we'd come and have a look at the head because there are options everywhere. Nicole Bench. could think about playing on the forehand side <coughs> and off that outside bowl that sits at 9 o'clock to the jack with a bit of weight and get everything to cannon across. 
but that might move the jack, so that's why she's coming to, to have a look. What else is there, guys? Smack well, the front I black, think that straight this onto is... the back black. Yep, that's one option. I think this is one of those <laughs> ones where we sum up, we have a real good look at what percentage... And I think, from my from my perspective, I think the, 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 the Alex, what you mentioned, playing into her own bowls, there's a wider target there, and there's a few more options. She can choose any one of her own bowls to to, to arrive into, and if she gets it dead right, it could, she could she could get the absolute result, but she will definitely reduce the count. So I think, and yes, she is playing the forehand, and I think that's. Um, once again, when you look at the percentages, I think it's the best option. And a big bowl in the context of the match. She's 17-13 down. And with a chance, if it gets back, she's in with a chance. This is close here from Nicole. She's Tugger. in the Let's area. Close. Gets that bowl. Oh! And that's definitely oh, cut down. it down. It's definitely only one down now. So good option. And, you know, she got didn't get the dream result, but well definitely has... Um, Reduce the count. See, you'd be no good playing this game, Alex, because rather than the marker singing out, you're holding one, they're holding up a red lollipop, and you wouldn't be able to tell whether it was oh, red just... or not. Oh! <laughs> Live in confusion. My bowling yeah, career yeah. has been marred by confusion about scoreboards because they have the red and green scoreboard numbers. And someone goes, oh, you know, who's who's winning? Or are you winning? They go, we're the red number. And I go, well, that means you've told me nothing. <laughs> there are two numbers on the scoreboard. They look exactly the same colour. So I just, uh, I'll sit behind a mic and ramble away instead, John. It's easier. That's not ramble. Uh, the final of the women's singles at the Somerset Champion of Champions being held here in Hastings. Next weekend, there's the Peers. Uh, the following weekend the triples and then we move on to the fours so we've got four weekends of fantastic competition with clubs from all around the country represented because they have won their center titles and here is another right stunning here. first bowl when you only need three shots to go out that's a an awesome bowl to start with on this end. Hides the jack, makes it even more difficult for Nicole, who's responded pretty well here. Just going to sidle just past. Well, that's a very good reply. It's in a beautiful home. Now, she switched to a front. Let's see if she gets her line, if she takes some grass this time. Looks like she has. She's definitely put it out there this time, which is a lot better. She's not far away on the weight either. Just about. Now, Nicola, we're just looking to make contact with the shot bowl and pop that jack back. That's what she'll be looking to do, just on the draw, just trying to draw as close as you can, but the bonus would be to just touch the shot bowl. Oh. And that's what she had in, had in mind. Nice weight, so that bowl's still on the head, so it means that it's worth more. Here goes the narrow one on the forehand again. Yeah, it could work against her if she hit it. Good weight, it needed to be around her own short bowl, sitting that uh, second shot. It's definitely, the, from me, the one work on, obvious work on for Briar going forward after today is, is working on that line taking on the forehand as Nicole just the misses touching the chair, touching yeah. the shot bowl again same bowl <laughs> twice, she's missed it by half a bowl wide again this might be a time where it's worth just looking to see where, if the jack goes clean past that, that red bowl that sits at 7 o'clock uh, to to the shot, or if it bounces onto it. Oh, danger, 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 danger. Panic stations. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, that's gone well. And Nicole coming to have a look. And I can just report that Kaylin 
from Dury Hill is 20 points and Nathan Glesson is 7 so looking like there's the potential for him to make it through to the men's final but and we know in singles it's never over till it's over so we'll just uh, await to hear the final result there you can see them just on the left of your screen that's Nathan Glesson uh, standing right by the score tick so Dave she's got is um, Lisa hold 2 here uh, a Briar hold 2 here or Three, do you think? I think two. so. I think only. I think yeah. it's two. Yep, it's two. Yeah. It's yep. the only thing. That, look, she's ended up. She ended up playing a bowl that has worked well for her. But I would have been running for cover a little bit there. I would have been getting round the back, uh, because if Nicole does happen to pop the jack back in any way, shape, or form, and it looks like she's a bit wide and not going to do it, but mm. so so Bri got away with one there. I think uh, she was a bit fortunate that. Um, that um, Nicole didn't pop that jack back, otherwise she'd have been in big trouble. But having said that, she scored two. She's right on the springboard now of, let's 20. see and make sure it is two. Yeah, I think it was. Yep. Oh, yep. Yeah, definitely two. How so much here we go. Feeling? Is this the final end? She's taking green with the jack. <laughs> so there's some... Was that on the forehand or the back end, Dave? <laughs> Probably the forehand, I'd say. I think it was the forehand, <laughs> oh, yeah. Dear. Oh, dearie me. I played wonderful bowls by Atkinson, and right on that 20 points now, one more to win this national final, and Nicole Toomey with eight points to score if she wants to come out the champion. The pressure really on both of these players now. Oh, she's okay with the green this time, so her hope yes, she is not yep. a bad one. Yep, very good. I would say with that clapping that uh, Kaylin has made it through to the final, unless it was just a particularly good bowl. Bit of running here from Nicole. She's just going to go through the head, but still another nice handy one in that in that catching area, in that holding pen, as we call it. And Briar just pulling up a little bit short. Still holding the shot, so Nicole's still under the pump here to rest the shot away from Briar Atkinson, otherwise it's um, going to be shake hands time. But she's in a good position, as you said, Dave. She, that, that first one just went through and yep. over. And as Look she at this. Pick the jack up. Oh, doesn't need to pick <clears> the jack up. That's beautiful. She's not going anywhere, is she, Nicole Toomey? And I suppose for her, we, you know, we talk about just reducing what you're looking at. Nicole's not thinking, oh, I'm 20, 13 down. She's thinking, just keep scoring ones and twos and then see where we end up. Oh my word! Just get just that. under. Oh, Jack. she got the oh, lucky geez. slide. Just been going. Just to got the lucky slide off of her short bowl, but still, there's, there's chances here for Nicole too. Play to get the split between her own bowl and the shot bowl. She's got the bowl and the and the holding pen waiting there. It's nicely set up for her to be able to convert this. Let's see if she's able to do it. Willing it to turn on the forehand. She thinks she's close here, Nicole Toomey. And she is close. Which half of it is she going to get? Still one down. Oh. <laughs> She'll be wondering what she has to do to get the shot here. And what do you do here? Do you stay on the forehand? You wouldn't switch to the back end. You're holding the win. Interesting. Oh. Okay. Well... Unless she's just heading off around no, the fair back. No, nah, fair call. She's literally oh, she, throwing the bowl She away. hasn't even done that. Yeah. She's played a nothing bowl, actually. She's thrown yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Played it. That would be the worst bowl she's played this weekend, I would say. <laughs> I, um, yeah, maybe that's the one time she thought, oh, my goodness, I'm holding a national title. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll leave it alone. Nicole now with a really good opportunity. Great opportunity here hand. for Nicole. Yep, on the backhand, sit the shot bowl, touch the jack. 
Touch the jack for three, possibly even four if it goes round the corner a little bit. So she's got a great opportunity to convert here. Just how's her nerve? How can she can she execute? Briar hoping she won't be ruining her bowl. Oh, that's narrow. Oh, and she's tight. She's tight. Yep. Unless she gets a result off of there, which she's not going we to. Have it. That's it. Wow. Wow, what a scintillating game, enthralling game between Nicole Toomey and Briar Atkinson. And it is the Paratutu Bowling Club star who takes the national title here at the Somerset uh, Champion of Champions singles with a 21 to 13 victory. And Nicole Toomey, it just, it's one of those games, isn't it? Nicole Toomey was spot on most of the day. Uh, and Briar Atkinson got a few good rubs, but she was always in that zone, wasn't she? Both of them played exceptionally fine draw bowls, and it's been an outstanding final here this afternoon. We're going to have a look at some uh, highlights as uh, Briar Atkinson gets congratulations from her coach, Morris Symes. Nicole Toomey walks back, a very proud Stokes Valley player, and the club there will be absolutely delighted with her achievement again. So we'll be back with the men's final soon, uh, but first some highlights of this women's final.
think age is just a number. Love the life you choose at Somerset Retirement Villages.
We've come to the finale of the Somerset Champion of Champions National Singles Competition. We've already seen the women's final, which was a stunning final between two young players within the New Zealand scene. It was eventually won by Briar Atkinson, beating Nicole Toomey. And now we come to the men's final. Uh, another youngster on the scene. It's man down the bottom of your um, right hand of your page there, uh, Kalen Huella of Jury Hill in Wanganui. And he will play a well-established national representative from Mount Albert, Tony Grantham. And that shows you in that graphic there how they got to this situation. So two very impressive performances in the semi-finals from these, and now we're into the final. So the drawing skill and experience of Tony Grantham against what we've seen already, absolutely magical drawing skills of this young man, Kalen Huella, and also a very solid, uh, knowledgeable brain on top of those shoulders. Nice to introduce again Mark Noble and Alex Reed to this commentary. I'm John McBeth and we're looking forward to I think a stunning final between these two. What do you think Mark? Two different players with expect within the experience uh, at least. Yeah look I think we'll see both these players back themselves on the draw too so we should see a lot of good heads after they settle down after these first one or two ends. So we've noticed, um, or viewers, or eagle-eyed viewers will notice that this rink is in a different space to, to where we have been for the last two and a half days. It's over a little bit. Mark, you've been uh, at the venue watching Janine play. Have you watched any, any games of bowls on this rink? And if you have, can you tell us anything about what we can expect here? Yeah, look, this, this is a pretty kind rink as well. So even more kind than the last rink. So it should be able to play either hand with confidence and draw a shot. As you've just seen there with this bowl coming round the front bowl, not, not fearing running into bowls. So we should have good bowls on this ring. We've um, also lucky enough to have Tony Terry back marking for us today. So, Kalen is uh, 28 years of age. Uh, these days, living in Taranaki and playing out of the Paratutu club, but uh, representing here his uh, previous club in Wanganui, Jury Hill. Here he goes, young man, on the way up. It's not unfair to say that because he's already got a gold star and he is has shown great temperament in he, these big games over this weekend. Member of the uh, New Zealand, the Māori Aotearoa team. Here he is. Bit of a run shot here, going for those two bowls. He could got take them. them both. Gets that one. Yep. What a start. Oh, one hung around. There's a bit of super glue on that shot. <laughs> Great to get that out of the system early on too, Mark, isn't it? You know, occasionally you'll have to run with Grantham's drawing power. So nice to just get in the zone early on. Yeah, and look, um, he's unlucky to have only peeled one of those two bowls. But um, that won't phase him too much. Nice again from Tony. He's had a good start to this uh, first end. So back to his drawing shot on the forehand. Grantham moves in to pick up the mat. This is the first end of this final of the Somerset men's singles. Champion of champion. All the champions around the centres in New Zealand Unfortunate that was on a fine line, wasn't it? Just needed to go inside his own bowl. And yeah, it would have favoured him probably. Yep. Good weight with that last one. Tony Terry so, locating the two there. So when you see the red lollipops in the hands of Tony Terry, the uh, marker, they f will favour Tony Grantham. Long Jack. Yeah, Tony's going pretty good today. He's been playing really good. He played really good the first game this morning and played really good to beat Craig Tinker in that, in that semi final. Yeah, 21 13. That's a, that's a pretty good performance against Tinker. 
Yeah, I think they were like and, eleven uh, all or something, uh, John and um, oh, real. And then Tony Strung a uh, uh, three three one three or something along those lines. And Huella had to beat um, Glasson, so that's a a good scalp as well. So Tony Grantham wearing the winter gear and his opponent dressed for the summer. <laughs> Slightly different, isn't it? I'd be wintered up. Oh, to be fair, it's, it's not cold out in the in this stadium at all at the moment. It's really, really warm, so they've got great conditions to play this in. Chucking it out wide there. Still came in from out there though, that's good. Down on the probably ditch, almost at the ditch. Not quite where he anticipated, but first two or three ends, often the players are just finding their way. Uh, we actually saw that this morning with Kalen um, in his first couple of ends. Uh, he was a little bit wayward to start, but then really fired up and played some goodies. So third ball here. Just a fourth year player. Oh, this isn't bad, is it, Mark? Oh, he's just a underneath. Bit, a little bit narrow, but should get second shot here. Good shot. It just makes his last ball a little bit easier, not being three or four down. Nice. Tony Grantham on the back end, representing Mount Albert. I believe their club um, started off as someone's backyard in the 1890s. I think it was uh, as sort of um, uh, recreation. Some people had tennis tennis courts in the backyard, but uh, Mount Albert started off in the backyard of uh, one of the families there. I think they're still the patrons or somehow involved with that club. It's one of the older ones in New Zealand. Not quite like Sir Drake. Not quite no, that no, far back, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Let's not be ridiculous, Mark. <laughs> he looks close if he's got a little bit of weight here. He can't he be far away he's here. It, he's got it all the way. What yeah. a shot. <laughs> two shots. And set oh, yeah. down for two. Beautiful stuff. So Thank these two man. players starting with twos. First two ends. Four points scored, four shots. It's the final. They're as they were at the start, level. Yeah, just a reminder, we're at no time limit for the final. And I think Kalen has played these shorter ends. Even the first game we saw, he was all going for shorter tight ends. Tony will probably go T to T, I think. Pretty nice start here. Yeah, good first ball. Sure, Tony's taking enough green with this one. But well, that's his first time down that hand, so just gives him a guide. And with these top players, Mark, it's always good to see their ability to correct instantly, isn't it? Um, yeah, he's looking, standing there, just kicking one <laughs> leg against the other, and you know, nonchalantly standing with his bowl in his hand, ready to go. But in the meantime, he's also thinking of. Yeah where he missed that one out, where he missed with that one and what changes he needs to make. Here we go. Yeah, he'll correct that in some shape yeah. or form. He's a little bit wider, so if he's got good weight, he'll play good here. But unfortunately, he's not got the weight again. Interesting. He might kick, it. He might kick his other leg in anger this time. <laughs> <laughs>
Kalen just down that same line. He'll be looking to make this a three. And yeah, he's really good here. That's great stuff, isn't it? Look at that. Look at these three bowls. I well, might see some weight here from Tony to try and open up this head. Maybe f on the forehand for the shot bowl if he's a little narrow. He might even yep. play the backhand. No, he's playing the backhand for the gap. So he's going to reach. Tony will be attacking the area. Yep, so he's trying to reach through the two bowls between them. And he's it's actually lovely really lovely close. Plays, isn't it? He has got this, I think. Oh, he got a feather. Oh, oh goodness. Gee. He had it, but then he didn't mark. He did. That was pretty pretty good effort, but unfortunately he's still three down. Kalen, just like a metronome on the forehand. One, two, three. This might end up in a good spot, guys. Yeah. Oh, no, that's helping Tony more, so... A huge gap there for Tony to reach through. Mm. Same way he's just played. Oh, he's he might drive his front bowl as well, which could take out. Three of them will go on the front bowl, yeah, won't three, they? Three of the white bowls. Uh, he's playing playing backhand, and he'll be up here. Well, he almost nailed it with the last one, didn't he? So yep, he'll be reaching through that gap between the two black bowls. He's gone narrow oh, this time. He's Ooh. not happy. He's at least two, three down. He'll be disappointed with that one, Tony Grantham. Perhaps a couple of uh, things Four, in mind, Mark. We saw yep. him sort of mm. flip-flop on his shot selection there a little, and he's Tony, ended up playing nothing. Tony Cherry's got the four, four, um, four shots to put up as well. Yeah, Tony says three, but um, Kaling goes down on the knees. I say oh, I might just measure this for four. It's just the fact Tony's got the four pedals out. I'm suspecting he's possibly right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard to tell from those angles from where we are to well, it's three. Don't trust Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's been pretty good most of the tournament for us. He has indeed. He's been really reliable um, on who's actually got the shot. Kaylin's oh, still going to play short ends. Been fairly intense competition. Uh, started at 8 o'clock on Friday morning. That was the women. And uh, the players, to get through to qualifying uh, post section, they had to win three of four games. I think by memory we had, how many was it? Seven got through in the women's. Uh, or the men, I'm not sure. So, uh, you know, a handful get through. And then... Uh, so I think, John, it's seven women and nine men there were. Nine men, yeah. yeah. And then they go on and play knockouts right through until this stage now. This is the last match of the three days of this fantastic weekend at the Hastings Club here. Yeah, so this is actually the fourth round today of men's singles. Hmm. On the back so end, you have to be. It's good again. Have to be physically and mentally fit. All these players bowling off the wrong foot, Mark. <laughs> That's only my version of it. <laughs> uh, Tony's pretty good here. Should land the shot yep. ball for one. Yeah, he's played it well. Lovely ball. Beautiful line. All those four bowls. Perfect track. And an important thing here for Tony is after dropping that three is to just get one back here and so the damage isn't so bad. Um, he will be aware that it's important end. As is every Good other shot. End. But that's a great ball.
It's only a bit just reaching it. Let's try to set this last bow or trail jack around the corner. Yeah, I think he's a couple of feet short playing that. Only one ball past the jack here, and it belongs to Kalen Huella. He holds the shot at the moment. And yeah, this is pretty good because like, if Kalen ch ch uh, draws the jack around the corner, he'll hold a good three, and Tony will have very little to aim at. Mm. So he can actually make this head really good for himself by moving the jack. And he's actually close to playing that shot. For it to break back in, that's what he was looking to do there, wasn't it? Correct. That, that would have yeah. been really good if he'd got just onto the jack. Tony Grantham now. How's his weight this time? I still think he's shorter. I don't think Needs he's there. to be there. He's trying. He's trying. Unlucky again, he's landed and fallen out. Oh, sit down. Hey, you read it well, Mark. He was short. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and that was just, it just needed a touch more, didn't it? And it would have been the perfect shot. But... Just didn't look like enough weight to actually no. sit the bowl and stay like he was trying to do. 6 2, first to 21. This is the final of the Somerset Men's Champion of Champion singles. I've had uh, centres all represented from Southland up to Northland area. On a good track again, guys. Yeah, he's just sort of settling right in, and it doesn't look like there's a favoured hand here, as you suggested, Mark. They're both pretty kind, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's a, a nice it's a, rink. It's a good rink to play on. And like we've been saying with most of the hands on the rinks they've played, if you chuck the bowl down the same spot, they will do the same thing on this carpet. Kalen now switching to his forehand side because Tony's blocked the backhand with his bowl. A little bit Very of shaky head delivery. from Tony. He's, Tony looks a little bit distracted about what's what's going on. He's got very high standards, Tony Grantham. Feather, or oh, not quite. I think Tony will just be aware that he's chucked three or four short ones going both directions in a row. I think he'll, after this end, he'll probably have a bit of a chat to himself about making sure the first one's up to get himself back in the ends. Mm. Well, that group of bowls there. Just wanting to be up this time. He's got great line. Very close here, Tony Grantham. Yep, he's played a good one. Great ball. What do we do here, Mark? What's the what's the call? Oh, it doesn't look like there's much on the other hand. It depends whether he can drive the front right hand white ball. Yeah, onto the black bowls and get rid of all the blacks. But he's not That'll be cool. That. Oh, he hasn't looked at it. So <laughs> I'm one thinking, at one o'clock. I think he's just going to draw. Yes, Did show us he wasn't afraid of some some aggression uh, early on in that first end. He had a a go at it. Look at this from Kalen Huliat. Down and past. Oh. Would have just about snicked the jack across. <laughs> As you can see, that f the front right white bowl could get onto the two black bowls and remove them. But it comes with risk, of course. 
Doesn't make it any less fun to talk about, though, does it? <laughs> there we go, got He's got the point here, Tony Grantham. And I, I well, think Tony's first bowl will be up here. I think he'll be realised that he's chucked a few short ones. He's very experienced, so... And I think we'll go two to two as well. Giving our viewers, our bowling viewers, and people who don't play bowls but are becoming interested in it, a good idea of the options when players are standing on the mat. Mark, and there are often, you know, as you've said, three or four or three options that could work and the players have to make their decision. It's singles. They don't get anyone telling them what decision to make. Yeah, both players are allowed uh, coaches, and I'm not sure that Tony's got any coaches here with him, but um, Kalen's got um, Gavin Scrimminger, who has been helping him in other games. He's a man with uh, not an inconsiderable amount of experience himself, and Gavin he has been around and run out for a long time. And in general, he plays singles for Wanganui, so he's, mm. he's got some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Look at this, his first bowl. It's the loosest bowl we've seen from Kalen. We'll be disappointed with that. Uh, but Tony did go full tee to tee. The mat is way, way back on the two metre mark. And the jack is way up here by the two metre mark. So good move from Tony. And he made sure he's got his first bowl up, which I was talking about makes it a whole lot easier playing the second bowl and this shows why it's a great shot from Tony taking the oh, chat lovely shot there trainer's experience here isn't he Mark and just changing it up and that's that's great stuff from Tony and it looks a little bit narrow here with this one mm. Oh, great weight, though. That was a marvellous correction of weight. Can't get much better than that. Correct. That's Tony. nice weight, which would have sat on the shot bowl and given him shot. Tony asking a few questions here. I think he's going to swap back to the forehand. He's just asking. Yep, it's They've had a lot of good markers here this weekend, haven't they, uh, Mark? And it's one of the good things, I suppose, if you can have nice, competent markers who are able to interpret the question and then answer it well. It makes a singles game just flow that much better. Yeah, he clearly would have been asking about Kalen's last bowl. Was it jack level, jack high? Um, in this case, it looks jack high to me, which means the front of the bowl is past uh, the midpoint of the jack. In New Zealand. <laughs> in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to get involved too much in that. <laughs> Alan needs Clearing to work. the front one. Oh, I didn't get past it. Oh, and he's, he's sort of made it hard both hands to draw here. Tony may swap back to the back end. He's got three seconds. Oh, well. Uh, he's got three bowls as a as opposed to one from Kalen <laughs> near the jack. Who's got shot? Is it Tony? I think Tony's got a couple two, here. two up here. Two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's on the back, on the back on end. The and he's pretty safe just full drawing here. Like he is. This is not bad if he's around the front bowl. Very and close here, Mark. Yep, Clear in the good. front. Little oh, cannon. Any of the front doesn't hurt him. Like that's okay. Lovely bolt. Could be three now. We might see a shot on anger now. Tony just hands in pocket as we see a man from Jury Hill make his way up the rink it's gonna to help investigate out, the situation. Are we having a yeah, Two. are you are you thinking a haymaker up the middle on the forehand mark or or uh, do you try and draw a second shot if you're leading 6-3? Okay. Hmm. 
it doesn't look like the percentages are brilliant if you're only the two light. I think on the drive, if, if you back yourself on the drive, you'll back yourself not to miss by 18 inches. Hmm. So if, you, if you're a good driver, I don't think you would fear driving this. It'll be an interesting right. decision. I, I'm picking the draw under the front right, so it'll be on the forehand. Decisions, decisions. He looks uncertain, so that's always a worry. I can't even tell from his pre-shot routine. Uh, just the draw. It is the forehand, as we were suggesting. Reaching through on the tight line, so he's sort of halfway in between all the shots we're talking about, but a square follow-through is brilliant. Is. Nearly cannoned one of Tony's bowls out. Do you yeah, think he's still two down there, Mark? Correct, I think two here. Tony Terry's already got two two paddles ready. Yeah. <laughs> Very helpful from Tony. So Caitlin just gonna measure. Just measuring for second too, I think, isn't he? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Tony Grantham was signalling too while he was measuring as well. <laughs> and we'll see T to T That's again. Stuff. So Tony is going to stretch these ends out big time. We've got a reasonably good sized crowd still here watching too, if you can see in this yes. picture. It's all the way across the whole stadium. It would be and close to 100, to 100 people. Oh, what a bowl there from Tony Grantham. But also just a, a thank you to everyone who's tuning in to watch this live broadcast. Uh, it's wonderful as Bowls New Zealand to be able to uh, broadcast a number of our events. And we've had really, really good our viewing numbers topping a thousand viewers at times uh, tuning in and there'll be more than that watching because often a, sh a screen is shared by more than one person so thank you very much it's what makes it all uh, worthwhile and we hope that you are enjoying uh, the games that we've been able to bring you this weekend Grantham's peeled off the hoodie and now showing his club shirt clearly as he continues to play that backhand Played his first one very well, adds a bit of weight to this, pretty much matching what his opponent put down with his first. 6-5 the score. That's pretty good from Tony, because by drawing a second shot, he just adds that little bit more pressure, even though he's two feet past. Alan's pretty close with this. Yep, second shot. Well. Oh. Shows you how good um, these players are too. Every bowl right smack on the centre line. I was just thinking that it's, you know, a bowl, bowl width sometimes in variation, but pretty much like that one, you know. The even Tony's last green. one, even though it's poor, it's right on the centre line. It's, I find it challenging, Mark, because it means there's no wing bowls to use. <laughs> <laughs> they all take the perfect green. That just shows the class of the two players being able to chuck every ball right on the centre line. And have I, have I said the uh, commentators <laughs> curse? <laughs> Tony, you're going to play the forehand now. Caelan wanders off to the side to try and get a better view of the situation. He knows how far short the shot bowl is. He nice. did, until this bowl, have the second. So now he's two down. Two shots. Well, I think your curse oh. is on here, Mark. 
I think he's having a run at that. <laughs> oh, he was having a run at it. He was too. Yeah, yeah. I'm not too sure why he just didn't back himself to even swap over to Tony's hand that he just played and try and beat that wing bowl. He'd get shot. Yeah, interesting shot selection there from from Kalen, and he's not super duper punished for it, but two down. So we're going to see the the lead switch here. It's seven six now in this race to to twenty one, and be interesting to see what happens in this next end. Tony, someone you don't want to let get any sort of momentum at all. And you can guarantee it's T to T again, guys. Hmm. <laughs> Is he known for this, Mark? Is he like no, I just it? think, well, oh. clearly when you need to change stuff, you, you yep. players have what we call our go-to length, um, and Tony will have a go-to length. And I would say from what I've seen... Here, it's T to T as his go to go to length. Kalen, of course, will be trying to play a bit shorter. He brought the mat up a little bit, and so this is probably three quarter length, I think. And Tony just into his work. Pretty good start again, guys. Great bowl. Yeah, Tony's first bowl. That's what bowl. this man can do. Yeah, first bowl effectiveness for the last three or four ends has been outstanding from Tony. And that's where a lot of singles games are won, with that first bowl. Getting the pressure on the opposition and then maintaining it with the second and third bowls. Setting up the heap. Good. Oh. Great response here from Kalen. Tony can sit on that last one and get make sure of the shot. Perfect weight. Yeah, beautiful. Just that weight. A little bit wide. And here we are with first three bowls all within a mat's length of the jack. And this isn't bad either. This is pretty it's good. pretty good. Yep. Four bowls oh. all within about a foot. that five I think <laughs> <laughs> not bad I look their weight control there is absolutely perfect unfortunately on this end they're not all in a line but um, five bowls all within about a foot um, pretty good in any person's standards I think Kalen looking to reach and sit the shot bowl here and he's got it I think it's a great shot oh yeah. great shot and we'll f that'll force a change of hand from Tony, I think. Tony will probably play down the backhand through that gap, try and trail Jack or sit the shot bowl. May even be a little quicker. There he is on the backhand attacking it. Beautiful weight, Tony yeah. Grantham. He's Look close at the way to the he's rub. played. Yeah, he's close. That's a good. Sh that's a good shot. Oh. I think he's still two might down here, a, though. Yeah, might have got a horrendous result because he played it with weight to keep his collision bowl in the head. Definitely one white, for sure. I think Kalen can only play the backhand. If he's holding one, he just plays the backhand, tries to draw a shot either side of his front bowl. He can play either side of that to score two. And if he does get lucky and touch the jack, it will be three. Yeah, and he is on the backhand. There's a chance if he's yeah. up. 
He's a that chance. One. He's a chance. A little inside out. little feather. Yes, good shot. Good shot. Gee. So definitely two. And that's what we see, the two blue lollipops there in the hand. So after three ends of not scoring, Kaelin gets a two and moves to an 8-7 lead. Oh, it's going to be a close game all the way, isn't it? You can just feel it. I can feel it in my bones. It's going to be one that comes right down to the wire. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always good if the games are close. Uh, even the players themselves, probably, if you ask them, they probably would prefer 21-20 than winning a game 21-4 or something. So, I mean, it's nice to win 21-4, but it's good to have a close game. You, you can walk yeah. off if you've played well in a close game and be reasonably happy that you weren't the winner. It's a nice start from Caleb. First ball. So the crowd now with just the one game to focus on, showing their appreciation. Yep, Tony's close. Two very good starting bowls again from the two players. One of those bowls where you think to yourself, ah, well, that might come in handy. Mm. Yeah, the last bowl from Kalen is more than handy. Yeah. Another nice bowl from Tony. Uh, you know, two bowls in the area, and now he's got some bowls to play to and chance to make something. You can just see uh, in the background the father of Kalen, Phil, watching on. Not Vice in President his head. of Bowls New Zealand. <laughs> not in his head as we were talking about it, which was quite funny. <laughs> Kalen's got the jack. Nice shot. Oh, here. look at this. Good That's shot. Great shot. Taking away a lot of Tony's play. And Tony's come down to have a look at this. I think Phil might be watching the live stream. I, I believe I've spotted a phone propped up onto uh, <laughs> a coffee mug, which is a brilliant system for, <laughs> yeah. for keeping your phone sort of upright. As long as nothing falls apart, I'm sure it'll be fine. I think he was. That's more... interesting. He was in the previous game too. Yes. He was sitting there with his phone, and I thought he's right behind <laughs> the play, and yet he's watching it on his phone. I like However, it. You can see down this yeah. end better than better than they can uh, in real life. There he goes. Felt... <laughs> I think he's listening to you guys, to be honest. <laughs> if he is, he'll grin about now. Oh yes, he is. <laughs> oh my goodness! Right, think... let's focus. Oh, it's a little bit wayward from Tony. He'll be disappointed with that bowl for sure. Interesting he played that hand, actually, I thought. but Well, I think he could really play well. both hands, but that look hand, hand yeah. looks more open. Yeah. Okay, we'll just play backhand, try and beat the back black to make it three. He's on a nice track. Yep, pretty close. Pretty good. Yep. That looks a better track from Tony. Hold your tickets, boys. Look what how a classy monster. is that? Oh, that is a monster. Is it just Three cla down. pure class. That is a monster. From the player's end, that uh, would have looked like there was no room to do that. And Tony's just gone. Thank you very much. Yeah, and what he just got on the mat is. and played it. He, did, he didn't try and think about it, which was great, you know. But you would expect that um, from Tony, who's current uh, blackjack. So rather than being 11-7 really. down, he's 8-all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
And like I said, we're back to these T to T go uh, ends. So the pattern set, uh, Kalen's going to play three quarter to short, and Tony's going to play T to T. Mm. And Tony's first one T to T is really good again. How good is this? Oh, look at this. <laughs> easy, easy. Apparently, <laughs> that's what they make it look like. They make it look like a simple game. Can assure you that is not the case. Yes, if you like, come down to a bowling club and give it a try. If you're not bowler, and, and try it out and see how much you'll enjoy the game. Absolutely, we've got uh, enough bowling clubs. There's 467 bowling clubs in New Zealand. Uh, so just Google, literally, if you just Google lawn bowls and then the area that you live in, I'm sure something will pop up and they'll be happy to receive you. Sure, they have all sorts of things like uh, community bowls and stuff. So most clubs would be welcoming new members. Absolutely. Tony's good again here. He might just be a bit unfortunate and land level again. Yeah, good shot. Not for the first time in his life, his hands go into his pockets. <laughs> Tony Grantham. <laughs> Have a look at this one, boys. This track. He's got yep. the check. Oh, good Brilliant ball. shot. The standard is getting really high in this game. And we're at eight all, so there's so much of the game to go. No chance to relax. Just going to cut under and Inside out. get a wee slide. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's worked out well. Callan needs to draw this really confidently and try and touch the jet around the corner just to make the the uh, position on the head a lot better. Trying to come back here now. Oh yeah, this is good. Wow. It's a fair shot, um, but it's away from the two shot bowls, so it's a little bit harder for Tony to play with bigger weight. Tony reminds me of Damien McKenzie when he's kicking for goal. He looks to almost <laughs> grin, doesn't he, when he's on the mat. <laughs> great shot here, well, I think. Well, what's he here? Yeah, that's yeah. a great shot. Good ball. And, and he's fallen down for two, and I, I believe Alan will be driving this when he comes down to have a look. He'll be driving the two black bowls, because he's got all the back bowls. The, the two black bowls in front of the jack is what I'm suspecting. Such a good reaction when you've played a perfect bowl like that. You're one down, and all of a sudden you're two up. And again, as we look at that, the weight control of these players on, on this uh, jack that's on the two metre has been superb. Yeah, all the eight bowls are almost level or, or past. Mm. I still suspect we'll see a drive. At those two well, it looks bowls. like his bowl is the backest bowl, isn't it, as we say? They're I think he's got the back However, two. Probably won't stay there if he does drive. Carry on. Yeah, no, I think he's got the back two, <laughs> and if he drives the two black ones out, then technically he might even have the back three. He's having a chat to Gavin. What do I do? He says thoughts. Eight all. I think back he's bowls, two down. Yeah. If he if he drives and he gets his own one, he'll be one worse for three down. But this is about how much you back yourself on the drive. Do you back yourself to miss by a foot? I don't know. Such a big target. When you look at it from here, all well, you can see are four black bowls, basically. So uh, It just looks like a forehand got... drive for the bowls. Yeah. Big moment. He's not afraid of doing that. We saw it on the first end. Let's see if we're going to see it on this end. He's lining up on the forehand mark. Yeah, I think we've got big weight, guys. Yep, big weight. And he is close to getting He's close hold. here. He's yeah, close. He's got, he's got it. He'll be one down, 
I think. He doesn't well, he sort of got it. Yeah, he was, he was two down to one down, so it is a, a good result. I'll just uh, take this moment to apologise to anybody whose eardrums I just burst. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to get that excitable. <laughs> uh, great effort there from Kalen. He's, he's right in the area, so, you know, he's, he's done his job. He's reduced the head. Oh, look at this. He's so, so close. Using that pole into the air, maybe an eighth of a bowl wide, Mark. Yeah, that's all, and like a fraction more connection on that bowl, the black bowl would have gone onto the ditch and he would have held uh, at least two. The players, I think Got a bit just... of a pause and play now. Yeah, the players just taking a small break. Only leading off, so 9 8 now in this final. First to 21 points. And the one thing you can guarantee the Jack will be down by the T, guys. <laughs> Mark has only just placed the bowl, but Tony's already in the groove. He knows where he wants it. One of the looser opening bowls from either of these players. That score, 9, 8, 21, no time ends, uh, no time limit. First to 21 shots. Nice here from Kalen. Right That's on top of bowl. the jack. If we just think back, his, the last bowl he just played was a full-blooded drive, and he's just got down and nutted a front toucher on his back end, or maybe a bowl that's a good inch away. That's... That's pretty good skill, isn't it? <laughs> to go from full to drive to a draw shot, there's a lot of t uh, ability there. Yeah, look, I think one thing um, the better players around will actually practice that. Mm. They'll practice driving, and then they'll have a jack somewhere else on the rink to try and draw two straight after it. Um, so that's really, you know, it is a skill we actually do practice. Tony's played a good one there too because he just popped the shot bowl off the jack, giving himself some chances to score now. Now, Kalen's found that track that Tony did last time down that end. So you maybe do get a bit wide out there. You're probably uh, a bowl and a half short. So Tony will be just overdrawing here through his black, trying to land the white. So he's trying to draw about two, two foot past the jack here. That's what he's trying to do, and that's exactly what he is up to. And he's right, played a magic oh, lovely way. shot. And it's good when you call the shots and the players are playing them too. Well, it's helpful. <laughs> well, it's good from a commentary point of view that we actually have got some some ideas sometimes. <laughs> well, look, the, you get it from the questions they're asking. Uh, he asked uh, Tony Terry uh, how far short shorter of the shot bowl was his black one. And so he played the perfect weight, played bang onto it, hit it square and knocked it up. So that was obviously the shot that he was planning and to pull it off as perfectly as he did. Pretty impressive. Great. Alan, just probably a bowl tight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just a bowl yeah. tight, but it's a good bowl because it's another second, so he creates himself some chances of his last bowl. So we've got a current black cap Blackjack playing here, Tony Grantham, and we've got a member of the Aotearoa Māori team from the uh, that Oceania competition that we had a few weeks ago, playing against each other. So Kaelin looking here, 
He briefly looked like he was lining up on the forehand around the short bowl to try and cannon Tony's shot out. I'm not sure if he could get his bowl to turn enough with the required weight. No, I'll, tell you the be... I'll tell you the shot, actually, I like Alex, is on the backhand, running the shot bowl into the ditch with the jack alongside it. Because the shot bowl is not a chalker, and you would hold three shots here. You would have played the oh, yeah. backhand. I like it. <laughs> hitting the shot bowl onto the jack, into the ditch, and both of them going in, and you make three. Four yeah, if your bowl stays on the island. So that's what I'm predicting he'll play. He is playing the backhand. That's one good part of it. I You're halfway he's... there then. I don't think he's got the weight I wanted anyway. But he he's might still close. hit that shot bowl. Could cannon it out. Oh, yeah. beautiful effort there from Caleb. <laughs> Either way, the idea was right what I was saying, that he could play. Everything but, sort of, yeah, but... Uh, You're not often wrong, Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, so there were, you know, as, as we looked at it there, we are talking about options before that, that we see, and players see different options, but, you know, Alex shot that you said, playing the forehand and playing the, the shot onto his own and uh, pushing that up and bringing the jack back a bit further. You was playing with waiting into the ditch, and the shot that he eventually chose was uh, that backhand, and it almost worked for him without putting in that uh, more uh, more weight than that you were suggesting, Mark. So the three options there for him. That's the uh, mental toughness of this, isn't it? When you've been playing for three days and you're now in the final, making those correct decisions is important. And when you think about it, some players have been playing from 8 in the morning till 8 at night on the other days. So long, yeah. hard days um, at the office, as I like to call it. <laughs> there you go, Kalen on the back end. He doesn't like this. That's what the body language told us. I think we have seen those longer ends. That's clever from Tony's, just... A little bit out of the four bowls, Tony's likely to play three or four effective bowls on those long ends, whereas Kalen sort of two or three it takes a bowl to find his his weight initially. And that's you're right, that's good from Tony because he's mounting pressure, and when he when Kalen gets back to the mat, he'll be two down here. And another great bowl from Tony. How long is it going to hold for? Look, he's just ensuring oh, he's slightly over the over the jack. It's uh, good stuff. Yeah, like he's in the area and two balls in play, two up. Kalen on the backhand. Oh, as we watch it come back in, how long is it going to hold up for? How much is it going to hang around? Not quite. Yeah, so Tony's going to draw for a three here, so... Yep, and he's not helping um, Caitlin by giving him any wingers or anything. And this is where it's important just to get second shot. Don't worry about the three down. Don't worry about the shot. Drop one and get on with the next um, end. Yeah, it's one of those heads that hasn't set up where there's a lot of percentage chance of being effective with your third ball if you wanted to be aggressive, is it? No, I don't mind the swapper hands here. Um, he's only got a beat. Oh, I'm not sure I like this shot. Mm. I didn't mind the swap of hands if he was just going to play down to promote his own or just drop inside the black. Um, what he's done is he's he's committed now to that, hasn't he? So his fourth, well, I his think fourth he needs bowl. To, he needs to come down, have a look, and actually realise he's got a lot of room. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's doing. Yep. So uh, Tony he Grantham, will, he will be four down now. That's such a clever way of building your four as well because your target's exactly the same size as it was a bowl ago. Every yeah, yes. Yeah, Tony's played this end really good by not setting anything up, having one good one and just placing bowls around. So I think Cullen's just got to think about one down, make it 11, nine, 11 eight, and get on with the next end, which is the advice. He's just talking to Gavin. 
And I'm pretty sure Gavin will give him that sort of information. I think you need second shot, but It's an interesting character, just reading some of um, Kalen's background. He's got a double degree from Otago University, physical education and commerce. He's now a financial analyst for a green hydrogen renewable energy company based out of New Plymouth. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, he played, he was an outstanding young golfer and he went on to play in the Callaway Junior World Golf Championships at Torres Pines in San Diego for New Zealand when he was nine years old, where he played in the same four as the current world number one, Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> so that's not bad, is it? He was selected for the New Zealand Golf National Development Squad from the age of 14, but then he gave away golf when he moved to Dunedin and University. Um, so I think here, yes. Johnny, he's got to pick a hand and just settle down on drawing second shot. That's what should be happening. Oh, he's not. He's going bear jack. Choice. Oh, I think this is a, just a little bit of an experience just here on this, this end. Um, and, and that's, end. Yeah, I think that's where the, the fact that Kalen's... Um, only been playing four years. Might just have sneaked in. So how do you recover from that, Mark? If you're if you're Kalen Hulia and you've just dropped a, a four that you shouldn't have dropped, you're now 48 down. What's going to go through his mind? How's he going to recover and, and get back on track in this game? Well, so the most important thing now is to make sure he scores this end, so that four doesn't count. If that makes sense. If he gets a single or two here, then it was 4-2. He's only dropped two singles indirectly over those two ends. So th this is actually really probably... If Tony scores here, it's going to be hard to see Kalen um, who will turn this around. So this is probably a, a critical end. And I can tell you, in all the games we've seen at the stadium this weekend, there has been no game that I can remember anyone getting to 15 first and then losing. Don't recall seeing any in the stadium, but there may I may be corrected with that. But, um, <laughs> well, you know, just say it with confidence, and people will um, believe I'm you. Feeling, right? I am yeah, feeling pretty yeah. confident about it. Um, there was one game this morning that was 18-11 that ended up 18 all, but the person 18-11 up one. So, the first person that's got to 15 in all these games have gone on to win the games. And Beautiful weight there. Yeah, that's a good start from Kalen because he's created some play. Tony looks a little bit narrow with this one. Mm. Holding up, though. It's held up quite good for him, hasn't it? Yeah, so here's an important goal oh, here from Kalen. And that's definitely two, so, two shots to Tony. Yep. He plays the same ball, get the same resting position, or sits the jack. Needs it to hold. On a slightly tight line. But the way he's played, that bowl should hang around. So that's fine, isn't it? You know, you, you haven't lost your bowl from the head. Yeah, it is fine. But I just think all of a sudden he's... I would say starting to panic. But he's sort of playing some shots that mm, he shouldn't be playing. And Tony's the sort of guy that will just punish you. He'll just keep doing this and adding and adding and adding. This is what Tony Grantham's really good at doing going to blink and be in big trouble and and now so, Callan's definitely on ahead now he's three down he's got to make a decision just like the last end and if he's driving there are a lot of gaps he's on the draw which is which is good he's wide though I think at the moment Wide coming back. And I think you'll see Tony here with the last bowl go back. Head to the back. Yep. He'll, he'll probably play the same hand and add a yard and cover the back a little. Isn't it incredible how quickly this game has just turned around on a dime? We're seeing Tony Grantham. He's taken the the driver's seat and seems to want to stay in it. It's a huge end this end. Two at a very close measure. You don't want to drop a four and then a three. Definitely, and well, it's not ideal, is it? <laughs> Tony not, looks like he's not, not covering. That's not what you want to do. Tony looks, or don't, he looks like ooh, he's ooh, going to sell ooh, out. Ooh. 
Oh, he's no, got he's away. Fine. He's and put he all his four. eggs in one basket here. Sniffed so a bit of blood. Back to back fours if Kalen Huella misses this drive, which we'll well I would expect we'll see. Tony Grantham there. That's interesting, isn't it? You're, he's almost saying to Kalen, I, I don't think you can get yourself out of this. I've scored a four. I'm holding another four. What are you going to do about it? Sort of a psychological warfare. Yeah, you can see Kalen's thinking about it here because he will be well aware. And the, the problem maybe for Kalen is he might be thinking, what happens if I miss? And we try to sort of, when we're coaching, we're trying to say it's not about the outcome. If we get the process on the mat right, the outcome will take care of itself. Okay, so... So draw to save. Well, he's got... He can just overreach because he can land on some bowls like this. He's not he's, far away. I think he's, he's got the gap. He's not far away. Needs a rub. Well, yeah. we're going to see 17-8, I think, in a second, folks. What are two ends we've seen from Tony Grantham? Yeah, like I didn't mind um, Kalen reaching on that one. But certainly the end before, I think the shot selection was, was not so so good. I think they've agreed it's three. Yeah, and Tony terry has got three red paddles up for us. And, and I think the winning of the game so far has been this T-to-T -t play from from um, Tony Grantham. Since, yeah. since earlier in the game when he was dropping his bowls short, he decided to go T to T so he could get the bowls up. And since then, he has dominated this game. Yeah, there's that sort of experience coming through with Tony Grantham, isn't it? And making that decision reasonably early on in this match. So hey. Kalen was up by 8 to 7. And, and we've had 5 in since then. And it's now 17 8. So 5 ins. And 10 points scored. And here Tony's given Kalen a chance to hop onto the jack first. So Kalen's really got to get in there and start uh, getting the pressure back on Tony. And he is good lined here. Yep, this will be handy. Well done there from Kalen. Well. So that's one of the key things in, in singles. When the other guy fails with a first bowl, you've really got to hop onto that jack and put them under some pressure. And Kalen's done that really good with that first bowl here. Still an opportunity. Wide open. I mean, at the end of the day, Tony still needs to score four points to close this game out. And Kalen, absolutely capable of chipping this right back. Yeah, look, Kalen scores this end, then the length changes, and the game can change again. That's what it's about. Here's a good shot from Kalen. Needs yep, a square. That's, a jack. Yep, yep. That's, that's still pretty good. Square enough. It's a good bolt. Yeah, it's, he's holding two, and pressure builds back the other way. I'm liking Tony's green here. Tony is close. Oh, yep. No. Oh, oh, what a shot. shot. Still he doesn't guarantee him scoring. Um, Kalen just needs to draw a shot, get the mat, change the length. That are the, that's the key stuff on this end. He doesn't look thrilled with it, but potentially for no reason, oh, it's going to pull up short. That explains the ace we let it go. That's where the jack was 40 seconds ago. <laughs> and unfortunately for him, I would think the way Tony's been playing, he will put another one in here. Absolutely, we'll make this two. Yep, he has Absolutely. been playing it. And this length in particular, this type of length. Yep, he's a little quick, is he? He is. How's that for a common commentary? Yeah, we, we sorted out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to say anything there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to Thanks, remember, John. you got to remember, we're not the ones chucking them, John. So um, <laughs> that's right. He, and he actually can't hear us saying that he will put another one in there. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we're just thinking, draw the one here for Kalen, get on the I, scoreboard again. I think he should. 
I know he was looking at playing the forehand there to sit the black for three. I don't think this is the correct shot if he plays that. I'd just play the backhand, draw one, get the mat. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I like this shot either, guys. Well, on the forehand he is anyway. Let's see what happens here, Kalen. Yeah. Yeah, he might be able to play a bomb and sit the bowl, but he's sort of got to give me one on the other hand. Welling it back in, welling it back in. It's not to be. I really see. think he should have drawn for one and got the mat. He's got to get the mat off Tony. Tony, as far as he's concerned, is just want to get this game over as quickly as possible. He won't muck around here. Now, when you're running in that hot form, you want to try and make hay while the sun is shining, and it's certainly shining at the moment for Tony Grantham. Yeah, I think um, Callum, when he has a look at that particular end, that he will agree that he should have just drawn a shot and got the mat to change the lengths. Um, Tony Grantham, three away from taking out this title, the Somerset men's singles. Earlier today, we saw a f fantastic women's final with Briar Atkinson of Paratutu beating Nicole Toomey of Stokes Valley. So that was Taranaki winning that title. Taranaki player in this final, but representing Wanganui. Uh, <laughs> And Tony's first bowl is good again. But he's not letting Kalen off the hook here at all. And you can guarantee that Tony will whack another one in for two here. And at 18-8, um, dare I say it, this, this could actually be the last end if Tony puts a really good one in here. Tony looks Clear reasonably in the front. good. He looks reasonably good. He can't miss this man. Doesn't want to get tied up in his own short bowl here. Yeah, he doesn't want to drop away too far either. Otherwise, he no. will still be two down, and I think he is two down. Yeah. And I think with this much room, Tony Grantham will put a third in. He's onto the mat straight away. He's definitely feeling like uh, he's going to get Smell blood in the water. Oh, yes, like this is good again. Tony's liking it, I'll tell you that now. That's great stuff. That might Tony. be the last bowl that Grantham plays here today. <laughs> Three good bowls. Yeah, no, um, Kalen's got last bowl on the end, so Tony oh, will have to right, play his fourth yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Might only be two. It's, we'll see in a second. Looks like just two paddles, but I could be wrong. And again... Oh, it's three paddles. So he does hold down. the win. So Tony Grant from holding the win. Be this, a temptation to have a nibble. Well, he could go big for Jack or uh, the shot bowl. That looks like what he's doing. No, he's... On the forehand. Trying to just miss his own or promote it. Too quick, if I it think. stops. No, he's way too quick here. Oh, at least he's still on the paddock mark, I suppose. Yeah, I think Tony here should put a fourth one in. And the reason I say that... Is in case Kalen drives and takes out the bowl next to the jack, then mm. Tony will still hold the win. I think this is actually head where you want to put the fourth count in. Well, you're never going to stop um, the shot selection for Kalen, which is to try and put the jack in the ditch or clear something out. And it doesn't yep. matter. You can't really cover that, so I, I think that's wise. Yeah, so I, I think Kalen will be driving here after Tony adds a f fourth, which I'm predicting. On the back end. Or is he blocking? We're it seeing a block. Like it, doesn't it? It's a blocker, boys. And it's oh. not a bad blocker. That's a brilliant it's, block. It's a, mate, <laughs> That's <fantastic>. a blocker. <laughs> okay. He's saying to Kalen, draw your way out of trouble. 
Look at that. You can see that from the player's end. That's, that is brilliant. That's a great block. That's so hard to play out to the bowls. Well. It's so hard to play. We usually don't. <laughs> I think here Callan just picks a hand and draws second shot. Yes. Yeah. That's Early in the what match, I would have said he'd, he'd draw it without any problem earlier in the game, but now his men, mental situation has changed, of course. He's under stress. And the more the more he thinks about this, the, the harder okay, it becomes, to too. It's okay what to talk to, is... to Gavin. But... And Gavin's doing the right thing. He's actually not talking back, actually, there. He's waiting for Caelan to have talked first. Looks like that from Callan's smile that he's got to make a decision. I think in a way I'd play the forehand and try and draw the shot. So if he touches his own bowl, he'll only be two down. And if he misses his front bowl there, he'll draw a second shot. No, he's not looking convinced here, Callum. <laughs> At least he's not sure what he's seeing the funny I'm side not of sure it. What he's just <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's all smiles yeah. on that, which is great to yeah. see that um, he could still handle what he was going on on the rink. And he is, he's going to yeah. play forehand draw, I reckon. Forehand draw to beat the front white bowl. It could be the last bowl we see this weekend. Oh, it looks big weight. He's having a nibble here. Right, he's past the block. And What's going to happen? Got nothing. Over, over. The second ends. Tony Grant well, from an outstanding display from Tony Grant from there, uh, John. It was a, a game in which Grantham realised very early on that uh, Matt of uh, two to two was the way to go. He pl wanted to play the longer ends, uh, and when you consider that it was eight all after nine ends, and then. Uh, Grantham scored on every end after that and didn't allow his younger competitor to get in the game. An outstanding final and showing the class of Tony Grantham. He's been on the national scene for a long time and has won numerous titles against uh, the four -year, fourth year bowler, Kalen Huella. And we'll see a lot more of him, I think, guys, over in the years to come as one of our most outstanding younger bowlers here in New Zealand. So the title has been won. The Somerset singles for men has gone to Tony Grantham. Earlier we saw this, the women's title go to Briar Atkinson of Paratutu. As the players shake hands and congratulate each other, uh, thanks to Alex Reed and also to Mark Noble and Joe Edwards and Dave Edwards throughout this weekend for their assistance and commentary. I'm John McBeth. We're going to have a look at some highlights. And don't forget, we'll be back again next weekend for more Somerset Champion of Champions coverage.
Think age is just a number. Love the life you choose at Somerset Retirement Villages.